What's going on, crazy world? Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Can't wait to get down with my guests today. Um, I love when I have these guests that literally grab my attention for all the right reasons, whether I'm intrigued by something they do in their life, their story of what they've been through, or the message that they're trying to get out, and, and nine times out of 10, it's a positive message. And uh, that's how today I got with my guest, Danny, a.k.a. D, from Bearded Villains. Welcome to the podcast, my brother. What's going Thank on, you for having you on, brother. I really appreciate it's an it. Honor to be here, man. Honor to be here. I've heard about the podcast so many times, and when you reached out, I was like, "All right, yeah, let's do no, it." No, brother, I, 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 it's crazy how we're connected. You know, we we live in this beautiful city of Miami, and, and it, to, to the rest of the world, it's such a ginormous city. Um, maybe in population, definitely in size, not as much, but to us, it's a small world, right? You know, we we're so connected by the the, circles, the right people. Man. Circles are always. You know, somebody knows something like Trick said. Everybody yeah. knows somebody that, that knows, knows somebody, somebody that, that knows somebody. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Trick. I'm gonna get him on too, by the way. You know, believe it or not, I, I trained his nephew. Oh yeah. I trained Trick's nephew and Trick and I we got a pass and a, a great guy, man. This is back in the days when he was first blowing up. We I got out of prison years before. He got out of prison like six months before me and we were vibing at a club and talking about our prison and who we knew. Stupid wild shit. But anyhow, I'll get him on soon enough. That's what's up, but That's what's today up. you're here, bro, and I want to talk about why you're here and, and how my attention was got you know um you're part of a, a group that i like to call a brotherhood and i don't yes. know if that's exactly that's what you exactly want to do yes. yes sir yes sir. A, a brotherhood called the bearded villains yes sir by the way when i tell people that you're going to be my guest and so on and so forth shout out to gabby i know you couldn't make it today gabby we're, we're definitely going to have you on when you're ready uh down the line my brother but he helped link us up too. gabby yes, one of your brothers absolutely. um when I mentioned who you are and the group and so on and so forth, and you know, I'm talking all this good stuff about it, you know, what you guys do and the storyline behind, and you know, things that you know you, you briefly told me, and then uh, they'll be like, "Man, but but why they call why? bearded villains? That's always the first isn't question. isn't that like a negative thing? Isn't that like an oxymoron?" And I'm like, "Ah, uh, listen. First of all, the story's cute and funny how it all started, <laughs> but." I'm sure as much as they all do good deeds right now, at some yeah. point they had some villain in them. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what makes this whole storyline even better because now they're you know giving back and now the brotherhood mm -hmm. is something different. But let me not say the story. Please walk us through this. First of all, Danny, where are you from? How old are you? And eventually walk us into how you got involved with Bearded Villains. Well, born and raised in Miami. Okay. Um, Cheers to that. Coming from uh, two immigrant parents from Colombia who risked everything to get out here, so... Shout out to mom and dad, especially mom today. You know what I mean? Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, I'm 38 years old. Uh, I started at the club about eight years ago, right? Um, so yeah, I, I get where people are like, oh man, it's such an oxymoron and what's going on with the name. But that's the play on the word, you know? Like, as soon as you see us, you automatically think bad. Like, mm. oh man, these guys are tatted on their face, on their neck, on their arms, you know, their beards are long, they're all wearing the same shirt, it's gotta be a gang, that's the first thing we get all the right, time. Right, right. Um, but yeah, we're playing on that because it's like, okay, yeah, exactly what you're thinking we are, we probably were at one point. Um, but you're, I mean, we're all villain in somebody's story, mm -hmm. right? Um, well said. Yeah. You know, and, and it's the truth, somebody talks, you know, that we're not good in everybody's story, mm -hmm. but the point is, no matter what we've done in our past, we're doing right by what we're doing right now, you know? And if anything, those people that have done wrong and wrong in their life, um, and have made it this far, you want to do right, man. Because it's like, you look back and you're like, man, I've taken so much from this city, you know? Um, I've done so much bad things and I'm not sitting here telling you I'm Pablo Escobar or anything or, right. but you know, I've, I've done my stuff and it's, this city's also giving me a lot. You know, I gave my mom the opportunity, my mom and dad the opportunity to become somebody, you know? Coming straight out of a, out of the projects where my, where, where my brothers used to live to be in Kendall, mm -hmm. you know? Even though my mom tried to keep up with the Joneses because that's usually how Latins do it. Then, right, you know? right, right. Um, it, it gave me a lot. Um, so there was a certain point in my life where I'm like, I want to do something. My brothers always kept me away from the gang scene. Always. Okay. My brothers... I was never scared to go to jail. I was never scared of my mom and dad. I was scared of my brothers. And I was scared of disappointing my two, brothers. Two older brothers? or Yeah, yeah. two way older brothers. Okay. 14 and 13 years older than me. So, you know, to me, I, like, my brothers always made sure I didn't join a gang. But I was infatuated with it. So much so that even in college, like, all my papers, I have a criminal justice degree, all my papers were on gangs. Because I was like, why doesn't my brother want me to join? And I realized it, you know, when I moved to Kendall, when I moved to all of this, I, I kind of saw how... There was no loyalty in it. And we're so big on loyalty in this club. 
Um, and that's what I based it off of. So when we started it, Ray's one of the original members. We have three left. Um, actually, we only have two left in Miami. The third one lives in Tampa, but he travels back for all our meetings because it means that much to him. Um, and I looked Ray dead in his face. I, won't, I will never forget it because he was sitting right across from me at, at the table. And I said, I don't just want to be a bunch of guys hanging out, drinking beer. Don't get me wrong. We are going to do that. And mm. shout out to him, Brandon, that made our own beer, you know? Yeah, I saw that. That was awesome. That. And I told him, I want to make a difference, man. I want to I want to start a legacy with this. I want to help. I want to, at least when all of this is said and done, we may not get a whole boulevard named after us, but I'm cool with a cul sac bro. Mm. Like, that's the kind of imprint that I want to leave where... Your kids are coming back like, hey, my grandpa did this, my you know, my dad did this, my uncle did. So this. how did the how did the exact idea bloom? Where where where, where was it given to birth? I mean, obviously so, because of what you've been through in the past, you've kind of wanted to give back or you wanted to do good on to others, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, hey, you matured now and, and this is the right thing to do and so on and so forth. Yeah. But when did this specific idea of whether it's the group or bearded villains in first and then it became a brotherhood? Yeah. Well, where did that one bloom from? So. Bearded Villain started out of L.A., some guy just selling shirts, right? And it was a social media thing where, you know, at the beginning, mm -hmm. it was, oh, you just have, you know, beards in common. And that's cool. But the ambition of who I am, once the group started, it was 16 of us. And when we had our first meeting, I'm like, yo, we have 16 guys here from different parts of Miami. This is what we can do. Now, we started really small. Like, when, when I told the guys, I was like, hey, man, I want to do charity. We started with simple stuff. The same thing that I think everybody that does charity starts with. Okay. Getting the homeless. Okay. Right? You're going out there. You're packing sandwiches. But you're it's building a camaraderie. What's going on, right? You're buying all the sandwiches. You're all meeting up at a house. You're getting the kids together as well. You're teaching the kids that this is what we're doing. You're packing up the, 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 the sandwiches. But what are you building at that moment? Camaraderie. Now everybody's doing the same thing. A bunch of different people from different walks of life that came together just because of this. Now we're doing this. Now let's take it to the next step. You know, we do make a wish, right? And make a wish is kind of the foundation of where we started because we have something called Villain's Wish, right? Okay. So our first charity ever um, was, was make a wish. And everybody in the brotherhood, you know, I'm talking... New York, Chicago, L.A., Switzerland, Belgium, Germany, they all saw the, what we were doing because we were the first chapter to do charity. And they're like, oh, shit, man. Yo, I'm on board, but what do you guys need from us? So we raised the $5,000 in less than a month, right, for, to take them to, they wanted a Disney cruise. That's what the, the, young, the, young, okay. the young kid whose name is Matthew, he was in Nicholas Children's, at the time Miami's Children's, um, he, that's what he wanted. So we raised the money, right? And all of our brothers from all over the world came together. They were writing letters to this kid, sending him stuffed animals. We have an interview on Channel 7, and, and you'll see that, that they put all the pictures of, you know, he has a whole wall covered in like letters from all over the world. And I saw how our brotherhood was coming together because of the charity that we were doing. And it inspired all of these chapters all over the world to be like, yo, I want to do that. So when we raised the money, I wanted to meet the family. I was like, yo, man, let's meet the family. Obviously, it's just, just ambition and also ignorance, you know, where Make-A-Wish was like, yeah, it's cool, but you can't. And I'm like, but why not? You know, obviously liability. You, you don't think about stuff like that mm -hmm. until you own your own thing, mm -hmm. and now you understand that there's right. a liability behind it, right? <clears throat> so I'm like, all right, man, I get it, whatever. About a week or two later, one of my boys, Nadell, who's no longer with the club, you know, for whatever reason, he just, it, life got busy, and my I've been in a position as I've been leader here that I've been lucky enough where 90% of the guys have just walked away because they're like, hey, look, I don't have the time for it and I respect this too much to not give it my full. Okay. And I get that. But he was working or still works at Nicholas <coughs> Children's Hospital and he's like, hey, man, I draw blood from this kid. I know it's him, man. Like, I know, like, I've been kind of asking questions and I'm like, all right. He's like, you want me to kind of set up a meeting? I was like, get more friendly with the family first because, you know, you don't want to just, hey, you know, let's meet him. So, you know, he got friendly with them, and he got us to meet him. So we went, you know, it was just like three of us. Didn't want to scare the family off, you know, or, uh, by what we looked like. Right. Met the family, and we asked them, man, what do you need? Like, what else do you need? We just want to continue to help you in any way we can, you know? And they were like, unless you can get me a bone marrow match, there's really nothing else. 
And at that point, again, ignorance kicks in, and I'm like, hey, take my bow marrow. And they're like, yeah, that's not how it works. So <laughs> it feels that easy. So I was like, okay, you know, we'll figure it out. So we go to Duffy's up in North Miami Beach. Okay. And every time we go out, we go just like this, man. We're dressing mm-hmm. same, same same shirts. You know, we get two reactions. We either get the, oh, man, this is so cool. What is this? Or we get the guys posting up, looking at us to see which one of us is going to break. You yeah. Know? Which is funny and ridiculous to me, but that's Miami. So whatever, we're there. We're, you know, obviously, we're the center of attention. It's like 20 of us in the same shirt. We're buying drinks, having a great time, celebrating the fact that we just did our first, you know, quote-unquote major charity. Right, right. And we made a difference. And, and that's awesome. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you know? And at the bar, one of my guys is like, hey, man, I don't know if it's that I'm a little lit right now, or, but this girl just told me she works at a bone marrow transplant clinic, dog. And I'm like, Some chick he was hollering at? Yeah. Oh, right at the, there. At the bar. Yeah. At the bar. At the bar. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, dog. I always get <laughs> goosebumps talking about this. So I'm like, let's, let's, let's figure this out. So we, I, I walk over. I'm like, hey, look, da 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 da. Like, this is the situation. I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to hit on you. Because I'm not. Mm-hmm. But uh, she was like, get out of here for real. I'm like, yeah, that's the situation. Like, I need, well, can you help me? She was like, yeah, and look, this is what we'll do. I can tell you where you, all around the world. We'll, we'll set up where they can go get swap <clears throat> kits. And we'll do it that way. And Your like, brothers. Yeah, right. everybody, everywhere in the world. So my thing was like, hey, man, I'll set up events everywhere. And you just tell me what hospital or clinic they got to go to. And go, all my guys will go get swap because... It's a brotherhood, man, and, and and not for nothing. Worldwide, they look up to me, and 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 I don't take that lightly. Where I'm like, okay, man, like if I tell these guys to do it, they'll do it, and they're like, all right, just tell me what to do. So we did it, and a couple of months later, they found the match. Um, Where was that person from? They can't tell you. Oh shit! Yeah, okay. they can't tell you because if if something goes wrong <clears throat> with that, right? You know, let's say they catch a disease from it or something. You know, the family might want to. Find out who it is and do right, something. Right, of course. Know. Again, liability, 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 yeah. You know? Let me rewind this for a quick second. So the brotherhood, b- before your involvement and and the um, the positive movement, the, the extras that you brought to it, you know, in regards to raising, you know, awareness or money or foundation, t- foundational stuff. Mm-hmm. Before that, the brotherhood was already worldwide based upon the the whole apparel thing, right? Just the, on the apparel thing, but, but then the apparel became a community. Yes. Okay. Exactly. The, and then and we were the we're the oldest chapter. Okay. We were the first. Uh, well, actually, LA was the first chapter um, established, but then they it was SoCal, so then they broke into a bunch of chapters, you know. So then you know by default we were it, Miami started at the same time as them, but okay. now that they're not SoCal, they're just mm-hmm. a bunch of different chapters. You know, we're the oldest chapter, and we were the first chapter to do charity. So we kind of you know we. we we were at we were spearheading the whole idea. Yeah, you were setting the bar. Yes, exactly. Right. That's exactly what we call right. it. We always set the bar, and it's and from that from then on there, it wasn't about com- uh, being in, com- in competition with anybody, but it's about doing better than we do we did last time, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, with Make a Wish and doing all of that, the next step was okay. What do we do? Become our own nonprofit. You know, so we worked towards that the next couple of years, where we're like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. The next big thing, you know, shout out to to, to our vice president, J-Mo. Um, he, he told us, we're like, yo, the next step is big sticker. You know, we, we're always the little sticker on these on these flyers, bro. We need to be the big sticker. We need to be the one raking in the money and not just cutting the check. And again, you know, the ambitious. That's in, that's in the makings right now or that's already no, been established? It's already, it's already, so, so now where we're at is we're a full 501c3. Right, um, it, and I actually just you know this week met with the biggest nonprofit in Miami, um, and luckily enough, she told me, "Look, what you guys got going is amazing, but you need to open up your avenue, not just villains wish." So, because what we do also is, you know, obviously we do a lot of things. We've we've given back to the veterans. We've you know we've done so many fed the homeless but our biggest thing is helping the kids in the communities right mm-hmm. especially in Alapata because that, that's where I come from so and I've been lucky enough to link up with people in Alapata. Um so what we do is you know we've adopted schools we, we, we've beautified schools in Brownsville you know where we, we'll paint take all the you know gums off the floors we'll repaint the walls take all the graffiti out so, fill so. Them, as crazy as it sounds fill bullet holes with fucking mm, with the plaster or make it look nice <clears throat> and then we welcome the kids back 
you know, red carpet, brand new book bags, kind of keeping their enthusiasm yeah, to awesome. want to keep going to school. Right. Um, and not only that, so every year we also give back to families. You know, we started with 50 families. We did, what, uh, what was it, uh, 150 this year, Ray? We did 150 families. We give them full Thanksgiving dinners, right? Because, again, this is inner city, um, Brownsville area. These these families need it, you know? Um, so next year the goal is to have all the families, 400 families, um, get the get the uh, the Thanksgiving dinners. So with the nonprofit, the way that we had it, um, it was only villain's wish, right? So we were paying, we were still paying for all of those things, but the villain wish was out of Nicholas Children's Hospital. Again, going back to our roots, because I'm very big on tradition, right? And we, you know, our first charity was out of Nicholas Children's, and you know, as fate would have it, unfortunately, Gabby's son got hit with a with a tumor in his brain and you know <clears throat> everybody's life got turned upside down because again you know we're brothers right you know i was i remember the phone call to this day when gabby called me that's one of the strongest guys i know physically and mentally yeah man. You know, you're talking about a guy that served and if you've ever seen him do crossfit it's ridiculous this guy is is superhuman but i've never heard my brother like that you know what i'm saying so to to know that when he stepped in those realms and everybody took care of him because they're like, hey, man, you're part of the Bearded Villains. And, you know, we've done Radio Lollipop. We've given so many toys to Nicholas Children's. They're family to us. So when they saw one of our own come in, they were like, yo, although Nicholas Children's Hospital does a great job of taking care own, of all right. of their Yeah, of course. You know, but it was there was that little extra oomph of, course, yeah. man, this is, you know, mm-hmm. this is one of the people that help us. Right. So we do we do villains wish and through Gabby, um, you know, with his relationships at the at, at at the hospital, he'll grab a couple of families because you know they're on the on the list for make a wish that but they're backed up, or they don't even want to make a wish. Some of these families are just here from other countries and they need groceries and the rent paid, and so we'll do stuff like that. So meeting with this, um, you know, big nonprofit, she was like, "You have something amazing here, Danny." And you need to open up your, your 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 vision from just villain's wish, where you can still get grants to help Brownsville and help this and help that. Just only help low income kids in Nicholas Children's. You can't help all the kids. And, and I'm assuming this all this happened recently. Yeah, it happened this week actually. Oh, that, that, that recent? Wow. Okay. Friday it happened Friday. I had okay. to sit down on Friday. So now, you know, aside from we already got a five hundred one C, we've been established for a year. Now the vision is even bigger. Now the vision is full on, this is what I want my job to be. Right. You know, like I own my own company. You know, thank God I'm, 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 I'm doing well for myself. But at the end of the day, this is my passion, man. This, right. is, what I, this is what I love to do. Like, there, I, I don't miss events. I don't miss meetings. I don't. I, don't. I, I lead by example with my guys. I'm not that guy that's like, hey, yeah, the event's on Saturday and I'm, I don't show up. Or I show up drunk and I'm sitting down, you know, because right. I went out to the club. No, I, I lead by example. For, for the people who are um, listening and watching who, who might, I don't know, it's a second guess everything behind this and, and think, all right, well, if you're that much different than, than explain to us what's different than a gang or something like that, how do brothers or family, is it only brothers? Like, what are, what are some of the things, like, you know, if somebody wants to join the beard, yeah, yeah I, don't, I didn't want to say that like that, but, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it is, it is. Okay, cool. Is. Do you have a certain yes, requirements and, have- and, is my beard long enough? <laughs> no, honestly, that's actually one of the requirements. That's, that's great. Not long. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, but seriously though, could, tell us. Like, I don't know what they are. I, I would like to hear this. What are some of these requirements? Where are you? Where do you hold your ground firmly? Like, no, this is a must, no matter what, or well, stuff like that. And, well, for, for starters, you need a beard because you, you can't join a motorcycle club without a motorcycle. So you can't join a beard club without a beard. So okay, it starts there. Um, you know, obviously, it's a brotherhood, so you got to be a guy. Um, you know, obviously, we do include the wives and in what we do, and and, Got you and, right. and our kids and, and daughters and all that stuff. But this is a men's social club, you know. Um, and I kind of feel like there's a lot of that missing, like especially nowadays. Look, right now, of course, I, I, you know, one of our guys was about to join Hell's Angels. You know, like he was it. He he tells me straight up, D, it, it was either this or Hell's Angels. And I like obviously didn't want to go that you know I wasn't scared to go the other route, but it's like I just wanted the brotherhood aspect. Now if I had to get down to get down, right? Because that's I, what that brotherhood got, requires. Yeah, then, then, then I got it. And let me tell you, this person I'm not saying his name only because I don't I didn't ask for his permission, but at the end of the day, this man's every 
trip I've taken, whether it be Virginia, Amsterdam, LA, he was right there next to me watching my six at all times. Anytime I got up, like to the point where other chapters were like, yo, you move like a gang, man. And I'm like, yeah, it's not like a gang. It's called organization, bro. We move militant. Yes, we do. But mm-hmm. that's, how, that's why we've never been in a fight in our life at any bar. Because if I get up to go to the bathroom, one of my guys is coming with me. Now, we're diffusing the situation before it even starts because weak motherfuckers are going to be looking for that moment. Like, all oh, these guys think they're cool because right. it's this and this. I, it's happened to us already, right. you know? And the fact that we're so well put together in that sense, no matter how lit we are, you will never catch us slipping in that term. If our wife's walking to the, to the, to the, um, to the, to the car, one of the guys is walking with them. You know what I'm saying? With her and her man. Because we're making sure it doesn't happen. Because at the end of the day, if we get into any issues, what are my funders going to look like? What are what are the people donating money to my to my cause? Like, okay, you guys are helping kids, but then you're at bar fights, right? And I'm, I'm kind of going backwards on. I know you guys aren't doing background checks or anything like that, but how, how do you know if you got a loose cannon who's trying to join the brotherhood for the wrong reasons? I mean, I don't want to say the wrong reasons, but he's he's not going to be well, the best fit. The, I mean, the, the wrong reason at this point. And we've had it before. It's just because, you know, they want to say they're part of this and because some chick told them about it. Yeah, clout. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to join it because this girl told me about it. So I want to look cool to this girl. And it's happened. Mm -hmm. It's happened. But you got to get down with us for a year before. I was going to say, so is there a probation period per per se? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like dead ass. Like there is. You're only allowed to wear one one of our shirts for a whole year. Yeah, you can't. No. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, because it happened to us. Look, man, I've had... I'm all for it. I'm just, I'm just, you know, this is cool. Look, I, I like I've, to hear that. I've, I've had, I've, that's a smarter approach to it. Yeah. So I've organization. Been, look, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been approached by, you know, my outlaws for sit downs to be supporters. We say no. I've had guys join the club that were coming from that world to see if we were all about this, but we we're just keeping, you know, quiet. I've had, you know, undercover agents join our club thinking that we're some sort of fucking gang, mm-hmm. you know. And once they find out who we, who we are, they're like. Yo, you really are about what you say. I'm like, yeah, bro, we are. Like, you guys are really a banded of yeah, brothers who yeah. are trying to do good shit. One hundred percent, yeah. And so, I get it, man. You know what? Look, I've had my own cousin. I'm glad that you're saying that. That you get it, and you're so acceptive of the the persona that you might be giving off. This the stigma that's out there. The uh, generalization that people are gonna do because of the beards, the tattoos, or whatever. You gotta roll with those punches. But it's you, been my whole life like that. Wes. Well, yeah, you're right. Right, makes from sense. The, yes, from the moment I moved, makes to Kendall, sense. From the moment I moved to Kendall, everybody hated me, and I'm like for no reason. So it's like I don't care. I never cared. Right. I never cared why you like me, why you do like me. I don't care, dog. At the end of the day, like I'm, I live for me. Now I have this vision. I'm sticking to this vision. You want to get down with it? Cool. You don't. I don't care. My mom thought I was in a gang. My cousin thought I was in a gang. Everybody at the beginning, they're like, "What the fuck is this?" People I went to school with, like, "Yo, you need to grow up." Like. Shut up! I own my own business, bro, and I probably make more money than you. I right. just have a vision of helping people. Yeah, I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I want to make an impact this way, and nobody was taking that out of my head. And I had a back a backing of a, you know strong guys. Now, don't get me wrong. I had sixteen guys at one point, and now I'm down to three. You know, some of them were kicked from out. the original chap, from the original. Yeah, yeah, some yeah of them not, were, not in the brotherhood in general. Yeah, but. some of them were kicked out. Cause look, man, so you you'll get kicked out if you don't show up to enough events. You get kicked out if you're not coming up to enough meetings. You'll get kicked out if you if you're belligerent in public too many times. I got guys that I'm still cool with and friends with that I've kicked out, and we're still cool, man. And I'll look at them straight in their face and tell them, "Yo, this isn't just this isn't for you." Right. Or they've told me, "Hey, D, this isn't for me," and that's cool, dog. I get it. I I have I, I have a you know we give guidelines you know we have our our, our uh, you know our rules we have our requirements we have our bylaws that you gotta sign we don't recruit anybody i don't go up to you and be like hey wes you want to get down with us mm-hmm. i don't do that ever i've never told somebody hey man you want to join my club no they come to me and they're like hey man i heard about this 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 and this how do i get down i'm like all right well one year this is what you got to do and here's the rules Sign it at the. And there's a dead ass contract of some yeah. sort or whatever. Well, no, it's just an agreement so that when I tell you, yo, you can't be a part of this for X, Y, Z. You can't be like, oh, but I didn't know. You yeah, were you told did right, it. Here. right here, dog. Right, right here. Like we are very to the T on that point. So you can never look at me like, yo, Danny's a bitch, man. He ain't never told. No, yeah, your signature right here, bro. I mean, you know, that that, that just uh, to me that legitimizes the simple fact that you're a true organized, you know, uh, entity with with. Great intentions. If you if you if you have those stipulations, those rules, and and an actual, 
not binding contract, but you know, uh, an agreement, an agreement that you know, if they're you, acknowledging, uh, it. yes, and if you void this agreement, then um, without us causing or stirring any bullshit, I have the right to ask you to leave, you know, the, the, the brotherhood. That's it. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. D, again, man, I think that it just... um speaks volumes in regards to the organization behind your organization. You know, if... if when you don't put things in paper that don't exist, if you don't approach something from an entrepreneur, you know, methodical way, uh, what, what I like to say, strategical. You know, you have to be strategical on, on the movements you make. We were talking about how you, you know, when you, when you, when people like us, we go in a building and we know where our corners are at. We know where the exits are at. Oh, you know, we did. It's a strategical mind frame. It's not paranoia. It's not. It's, it's just. It's I want to. I want. Yeah. Exactly. I want to be ready for the any case scenario as best as I can without ruining whatever situation I'm in, but I want to be that person because the majority of them will get slaughtered if some bullshit pops off while you have those select yeah. few of us, right? Well, those are the same type of people who approach, you know, things like what you're doing right now with the brotherhood and what you guys got going on. And and I think it's dope, bro. And by the way, you know, I, I, don't, I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass. I don't like to, uh, I'm just, I'm just a real ass motherfucker, right? Nisa, shout out to Nisa, my sister from another miss. I mean, I love you, girl. Um, we went to an event you guys just had recently, I think uh, maybe a month ago, maybe, yeah. right? It was at the brewery. You guys so, just unbranded. presented your, right, so it's, it's uh, Unchart, what? Unbranded. Unbranded, unbranded yeah. brewery here in Miami. Uh, you guys have your own beer now with them. Yes. What's yes. that? Let, let everybody know what that is really quick. So, now. one time for Unbranded, they've been super, super supportive of everything we've done. Um, we've done several beers with them. Um, a couple of years ago, we did... Uh, um, a beer with them where uh, you know uh, proceeds of their beer goes towards our our villain wish foundation oh that's nice yeah nice. so we were they were doing it in um you know like every quarter where they would drop a beer and they'll help us out with that but now we got a beer um it's called the miami villain um and it's kind of an it's kind of a crusher beer basically like a coors light you know it's easier to drink because the other ones were ipas and and sours and i love ipa <laughs> i'm branded i'm branded ipa baby let's go <laughs> yeah so it's, it's it's a little harder to drink for you know oh yeah yeah for sure without a doubt yeah yeah so now this one's a little bit of a crusher beer um and they're helping us with proceeds going towards our villain witch fund that's awesome and bro. they've stood behind us every single event man so I, one time for them absolutely well uh, yeah definitely a big shout out to them uh, uh, Amazing brewery. We got awesome breweries here in Miami. Yes, man. Yes, we got awesome breweries. It's, it's a great thing. I love breweries. Maybe it's a age thing. I don't know. You know, I know <laughs> we're, we're done with the clubs and whatnot. Yeah. I can have a nice lounge, you know, with some good music in the yeah. background, but I really like some breweries type shit. Yeah. So I get there with her. We walk in. Me and Nisa and I walk in. And of course, you know, I, all I see is a bunch of fucking bearded, bearded villains. villains, you know, <laughs> but I'm talking about a shitload. You guys pack that bitch up. Yeah. I don't want to make up a number. Give me a real number of what you think. I was guesstimating. Oh my God, I was saying one, 110. I didn't know it was hard because yeah, yeah, of, of the narrowness and the length of the brewery when you walk in, right? Yeah. But then I forgot up on the stage when you guys were doing the raffle, there was like 50 people right there on the floor. So yeah, yeah definitely 200. Yeah, yeah. So 50, 200 about that. I'm over there, you know, drinking with Nisa and I'm looking around like a little kid, like, hold up, bro. There's, but everybody's smiling around this motherfucker. Yeah, man. I see a bunch of hands shaking and hugs being the what what the fuck? This don't look like no bearded villain, you know, like this this ain't making sense. Yeah, we I see a bunch of thug looking animals, but they're all showing mad love and it's just camaraderie left and yeah. right. And that's all I saw. And I and then immediately um one of your brothers that needs a new oh my god, I'm a I'm such an asshole. And if you say who he is, yes. I'm gonna ask him to forgive me. It's, it's Caesar. Caesar. Yes, Caesar. Caesar, I remember Caesar. <laughs> I remember Caesar. I apologize. Caesar in, in all with all due respect is a buttercup. I fucking love that yeah, guy, he's bro. Amazing, bro. Fucking love yeah, that as guy. Buttercup as he is, that motherfucker's crazy. He be doing that fucking uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard. Let me tell you, bro. Bro, Lisa <laughs> told me it. and she showed me some videos. I'm like, oh my God, my boy's for real yeah, about that. Yeah, he bought that life. <laughs> but I saw him right away. Right away, he, he bought us beer. 
uh, you know, bought us a beer and cause we had just made our first order. And I'm like, Caesar, man, you got to tell me what's going on. This, this shit look too friendly. And he starts pointing shit out. He says, they just came from out of state. They just met them for the first time. Mm-hmm. Those people would, he's, and I'm like, hold up. There's people coming. Yeah. People from North Florida, this, that, whatever, uh, Texas, whatever, Canada. Canada. I was like, this is so dope, man. I felt the energy. I tell people all the time, I don't know what it is. I'm not trying to say I'm some mutant with superpowers, but one of my biggest strengths are detecting energies. Yeah, vibes, man. Yeah, yeah man, vibes. I like to say vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That vibe was real. That vibe energy, was real, dog. Real. But that energy, energy was real there. Yeah. It was dope. It was nothing but positive vibes. There was no bullshit in there. Oh, man. And it speaks volumes. But that's the way it's, it's so... As a person who grew up having a lot of problems, I never understood why I had the problems I had. Um, I've always been that way, man. I know I got a fucking shit face everywhere I walk because it's just that's my face. But it's always love, man. And all my brothers are the same way, man. Like, I'm telling you right now, I've touched down in different cities. I've touched down in different countries, man. Countries where I've had... When we get to... When we got to Amsterdam one time, okay? Ooh. And you know the Europeans are big on... The, their love is so different than ours. Yeah, man. And, and they yeah. make fun of us. They're like, oh, you <coughs> you Americans and your machismo, you know, because they love to hug and fucking, it's just a lot of touching over there, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> Too much for me. Yeah. But when we got there for the European meet, because they have their own European meet, um, shout out to my brother Rabbi from Netherlands. He put on a great meet. But there was a point when we got to a place called Cutthroat, right? That's the name of the bar. And as soon as we got out of that 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 van, that whole city block was chanting 305. Shut the fuck up, I really? swear to God, bro. That's dope. And it's like, <clears throat> you know, when you walk, like when we, and from Miami, when you walk in places, the first thing you're doing is this. Mm-hmm. Eat some motherfuckers. You're trying to see where we are, who's who's what. You know, that's the mentality we have. We have motherfuckers on the wall. Good ass music playing, but you on the wall. You holding up the wall. That's what, that's what I call them. The guys yeah. holding up the wall. Yeah. And it's just a lot of like tension. Though. Yeah. And, there's never been that at one of our meets. That's I've dope. never walked in. I've gone to Nashville, LA. I've gone, I'm telling you, all over the world. I've been to Morocco. I've been everywhere. And it's always, as soon as we get there, yo, what's up? I could be meeting a person for the first time in, in face-to-face. Yo, Miami, what's up? Because we caught each other by... Yeah, yeah, of course, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. Tennessee, what's up? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way it's always been. And I can tell you, man, like, there's been guys that, you know, shout out to my brother, Suti, He's he moved over from Switzerland over here, but as soon as he moved over here, he took two months off. This is such a European thing to do. Bought a little car and he just started going everywhere around the, the nation. States. Yes, yeah, in a little beat up car. Yeah. And you know where the he Swiss was are like that, bro. Yeah, and you know what he did? He stayed at one of the brothers' houses every time he would stop. Oh, that's dope! Right, 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 right. And just sleep on the couch, dog. And everybody held him down like that. Like, oh, yo, Suti, you're gonna get here? Da, da, da. No problem, dog. I'll make some room on the couch for you. And that's what we're about. So okay, so let me let me let me play a little bit. Let me uh, shout out to my brother who loves to play devil's advocate. Let me let me play devil's advocate just for a little hot second. Mm-hmm. Typically, I don't like to do this, but just mm-hmm. just you know, so we can get as many sides of the spectrum as possible, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want somebody to try to call me out a week later. One of my one of my friends from my my second family who I love so much, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, Wes, you let Danny off the hook. You didn't you didn't hit him with the penetration <laughs> questions that." Hold up, I said penetration. Danny, come out there. You know what I mean. Pause, pause on that. <laughs> um, you didn't hit him with those, you know, type of questions that you normally would do in person when you drill somebody, right? So yeah. let me just play a little bit of devil's advocate. Some will say, a lot will say, especially if you know the history of, of certain gangs, mm-hmm. they start like this. Yeah. You see, I can already see your face. You've been to this already. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. So I don't gotta beat up, I don't gotta beat up a dead a dead, a dead uh, horse. But mm-hmm. what do you say to or not you, you don't have to explain yourself, D. Fuck that. You know all that. But what do you do when if, if, ohala? Doesn't happen, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Oh, hopefully, but what do you do if a chapter starts taking that weird turn and goes a little bit more of, "Hey, man, yeah, we had good intentions. Yeah, we still do what we can for the community, but this brother got caught up in some shit, and we had to go back him up, and it turned to some, turned some some gangster shit. Yeah, it turned some 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 wild shit, and now we're on the news, or now now four of our brothers got arrested, and now they got. Well, has that happened? Don't put yourself in a position it, that where it's it, something. It definitely hasn't. Um, well, that's it, good. It, okay. it, it, it hasn't yet. You know, knock on wood, obviously. Um, but our, you know, like I think we hold ourselves accountable. You know, all the presidents kind of hold ourselves accountable with stuff like that, and they've, you know, most of them have come to me like, "Hey, how do you how do you go about this, or how do you go about asking these questions, or how do you go about, you know, saying no to somebody." Um, 
and it's just standing firm on what it is that you believe, man. You're going to know yeah. you're going to know in a year where this guy's heads at. Right. Um and it's not to say that some of my guys weren't in a fucked up place when they joined this, man, cuz they were. Or there's a time where you go through some fucked go, up Yeah, go shit. straight while you're in. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's like, Human. you know, yeah, but that's what I think we're at a point in our age, uh, like uh, our age where we don't want to be in that bullshit anymore, dog. Okay, you know so like, let me piggyback that. D- does does the brotherhood tend to favor a certain age group? Like, is that is that? Can no, I jump? No, no, no it varies. Man. Really? No, man. Honestly, look, man. Those uh, is it Silver Fox, the guy that came to to DSV Silver Fox. It's an old man, you know, older dude, retired, in his sixties, and he joined the brotherhood. Man, no chapter. He's just from what? A, what about on the younger spectrum? I uh, think I think old there should obviously be no no kind yeah, of cap. Yeah. But on the younger, where do you guys average? Like who who are the youngest? The, well, we we would make fun of this guy that was twenty years old that joined. Shut uh, up! Not really? make fun of him. No, I get know, that, but he's such young though. Yeah, yeah, because he couldn't drink, so we'd fuck with him. Uh. Um, he was out of um, uh, I think it's Eastern Virginia or Western Virginia, one of those two. Um, no, it was yeah, it was uh, Eastern uh, North Carolina. Um, Super young guy. He ended up being the captain, right? Um, obviously, you want a twenty-one and over, you know. But this guy looked like a grown-ass man. So, right. like, what do you, you know, what are you gonna do? But yeah, you want to be twenty-one and over because at the end of the day, what do we do aside from charity? We go out and drink, bro. We, we, we like, yeah, no one's trying to make you a bunch of fucking squares, neither. Yeah, you guys like, are grown men look, doing your thing. Day, this is a social club. What is the social club like back in the nineteen twenties? What would what would men do at a social club? You'd leave work, you go to your social club, you'd have your drink. Talk your shit, and then you'd go home. You know, you'd kind of unwind before you went home. Right. So this is not the same aspect where it's after work. It's more of a, this is where you get your one time a month to be like, hey, babe, I'm going to go hang out with the guys. And since the wives know, okay, you know, I, I've been around them. Like, there's times where I'm like, bring the wives just so they can get bored <laughs> because they're going to get bored. Chilling right. with us, we're chilling with Bunch them, of guys, yeah. drinking, talking shit. So, so half of the time they're like, why the fuck did you bring me this? So, so, so uh, unfortunately D I didn't do this on purpose, but you kind of just set yourself up for something that I want to, I want to get into. <laughs> right. So yeah, take a sip, take a sip of that. <laughs> take it. <a> tr- tr- <laughs> I love, I love that you are, you, uh, you willing to take that with, with a grain of salt and laughter. Absolutely. Um, you know, they say it's very difficult to uh, to date or marry law enforcement yes. people in, in certain careers because mm-hmm. they bring things home with them. Even, even like, ambulance people or certain firefighters that see a lot of shit depending on where they work. People just who bring work home. It's a difficult yeah. thing. It, yeah. it's, you have to have a balance. And some have a, a, a an easier time balancing when the job isn't as demanding. You know, mm-hmm. they, they just come talk about fucking Betty who stole their goddamn coffee, out, whatever, some bullshit. Yeah. But then you have those who really bring him home. Well, I would imagine it's, it, it might be hard to marry or date somebody who's it's very passionate about something if they don't sell, uh, share the same passion. Yeah. Have to sit back. They share passion, but they have to sit back and, and see yours grow because they're not totally positive that is the yeah. right route to go where yeah. are you going with this yeah. is this doesn't fully bloom are you really onto something or are you yeah. just so obviously i know i have i have an inside scoop we you know we did yeah. lunch a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. um you went through some times at some point and and uh, i don't know if it happened a couple times it's, but yeah it's happened a couple of times because of the club yeah. okay well so, see you know uh, i told you before we we ever not had to, not to blame the club at all not, well not, not, I, I told you before the podcast i don't want to talk about anything that that's you know yeah, uh, and, I'm an open and, book, and, and i appreciate that i'm an open book. um i definitely just want an angle of it not to attack the situation but it, it's got to be difficult you went through some difficult times yeah. with certain women that you, you thought yeah. you know could have been the one maybe yeah. was the one whatever mm-hmm. and I would like to, if you don't mind talking about it, what, what, what was the difficulty behind balancing the club and balancing the relationship, if it was any or if it was them? And then the second part is, what did that leave you in? Because you you did tell me you faced you know a certain level of depression and, yeah. and that the brotherhood came to your rescue, yeah, which is something that you didn't see coming. Yeah, yeah. Describe well, that. I, you. I, I, not to say I didn't see it coming. I'm, I'm grateful that it happened. Okay. Um, I wasn't looking for it. Just because, you know, as men, when you go through your shit, you tend to bottle it up. And I've bottled my shit up. I'm gonna go ahead and say about almost 15 years. Uh, a, a lot of shit, you know, whether it be mom, you know, parent right. shit or just bad relationships, all of that. Um, and 
with the club when it, when it started, I'm I'm a very passionate person. Whatever it is I'm doing, I'm 110 percent behind. Okay. Whether it be my business, whether it be the club, whatever it is, to the point where uh, I had a I had a mini stroke in the club uh, a couple of years back because of all the pressure I put on myself. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard for in my situation, and I, and I said it at our eight year um, uh, anniversary speech where you know I was I was talking to the wives. <laughs> And I said, you know, first and foremost, I want to thank y'all for putting up with this shit because it's not easy for you to give me your husband for a certain time, maybe missing, I don't know, birthdays or something, you know, Facts. My, some, yeah, of my, right. some of my guys don't, but maybe they do, right. you know, um, and I thank you for that. But in turn, I know I've returned better men. I know I've returned better husbands, better fathers, because all of my guys have become better because of this. And I can say that without flinching. And they'll tell you the same thing. Because I I hold them accountable for everything they do. And and I tell them all the time, you know, I've told my guys, aside from the club, I, I speak to them on vision boards. I, I, I push them to ask for that raise. I tell them, what the fuck are you doing? Where are you at at work? Why haven't you done this? Yo, you love doing this. Why don't you open up your own business? I'm that guy. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's, how I got to where I'm at. Somebody was telling me, yo, what the fuck? And I took that and brought it into the club. You know what I'm saying? And as a leader, I tell my guys who I'm trying to make leaders or, and have made leaders, yo, you need to talk to, because I have, so we have enforcers, right? I have seven enforcers. Not enforcers in the sense of beating up people, but they're enforcing the rules. Rules, right. right? So since there's fucking 45 guys, I can't answer 45 phone calls so i put a certain amount of guys under each enforcer each enforcer is in charge of them if they have a question ask your enforcer come to me again structure yes you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. keeping it organized so with that is i'm making them leaders i'm making them hey man if you can answer the question if you can inspire this guy to be better do it it's on you to do that. The same way I made you better, it's on you. Sorry to point at you, but <laughs> no, <on> you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was, over here like, I was yeah. all into it. I was like, yeah, me, I'm a piece of shit. What the fuck's wrong with me? Yes. I was with you. Go. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. role playing. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. But for real, like, it's, it's, somebody did that to me. I did that to you. Make sure you're passing it on. Right, right. You know what right. That's what legacy is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with me, I was just so passionate about it. Like, I, you know, the two relationships before the really bad fucking the one that broke the camel's back they all told me like yo you're you're too into this shit for what like for what why do i always have to be at events and you gotta be walking around talking to everybody and you can't come check up on me they, they, they felt second yes but at second. the end of the day it's like even the wives will tell me like yo but d has to do that because nobody else in my club is that guy. They're not like, they're now starting to be that way because I've told them like, yo, motherfucker, three foot rule. Somebody's three feet away from you. You better be introducing yourself and telling them what we do because that's what we're here for. But some of my guys aren't like that. I'm, you know, I'm trying to break that shell of them. By the way, quick, quick shout out to Caesar. Caesar did that so fucking quick. Yeah. He came out with just, yeah. and I'm like, my boy, have, do you got a cheat sheet behind you? Just yeah. did something you practice? But, he's like, bro, it but is. He's a he says he's it's something so that we does. do because we want to. We want to be yeah. ready to tell people the good that yeah. we. And when, even that, he sold me, and I was like, I get it. Like if I'm if I'm religious, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read my Bible and I'm gonna be ready but to look, spit some fucking verses but, at you, right? But look, but look what I got, right, Wes? Now look what I got. Now, yeah, exactly. It, it got there we go. Here. Yeah, now, no. we're, now we're talking. Yeah, now exactly. All the people that are, that are watching this are hearing what we do. The positive so that vibes. conversation. Yeah. That, that simple, something that's so simple, well, but yet so hard for yep. some, has broken that barrier, right? So now, at, at all the events, I'm that guy. And I tell the person that I'm with, look, I love you, but you're going to have to <laughs> sit here with the wives and have a good time, man. Get fucking wasted. I don't care. Fast forward real quick, but let's rewind. Would you say now, now, even though you're going to, you're going to obviously, you know, you, you seem, you know, very, you're going to own up to your own shit, but would you say that? It wasn't that, oh, I could have done so much better this and that. I told these chicks and they didn't fucking, they thought they was going to blow it off. They thought it was going to be different. Like, could you throw them, not shade, but could you throw some blame on them without feeling bad the about only it? One don't, don't be too manly about it. Like, oh, it was me, it was me. No, I get yeah. it if it was you because you were busy doing good shit and all that. But is it, no, they could have been more understanding. Now that I reflect, nah. they could have been more understanding. They could have been, no, it was you. Uh, no, it's. I would take most of the blame on that, but that's just who I am as a character. Not the last one. The last one is just trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but every girl before that, 
it, it falls on me. It does because at the end of the day, I should have gone back and checked that I'm in seven. You didn't. You didn't have enough balance. Your balance wasn't there yet. No, not enough to to keep them. No, I was very selfish in the sense of, hey man, I take care of you. I pay all the bills. I do all this. I take you to nice dinner. Deal with my like, shit. Like give me my yeah. Even though money. you're not being a bad guy, just I'm not, I'm but not. you're not being there enough. Yeah. So, but the thing is that my guys go back and check on their wives, right? You know what I'm saying? But they're married, and I don't know. I've never been married, so I, I don't know. There's things that I just didn't do right. I know I didn't do it right. You know what I'm saying? Because after okay. this, after that, it's like, fuck, I, I could have gone back for five minutes and just sat with her and asked her how, how, her, how she's going, how, right. how she's doing. You know what I'm saying? You didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, those I didn't, little things, right. I didn't, but, you know, it's one of those things where where's your communication at? Where's your understanding at? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't you come up to me and just hold my arm and like, hey, I'm just going to walk with you. Now, have you have you found a common ground of why haven't these girls been communicated enough? Is there something that you're overlooking by the choices you're making on which ones yeah, you're entertaining? 100%. Yes? <laughs> yeah. All my guys that are like... Ray, Ray, Ray's over. Let's, let's make sure Ray's not posting this part. All my, <laughs> all my guys right now are like... They're, they're all going to watch this and they're like, yeah. they know what the oh, fuck yeah, it is. Yeah, I got to type. I got to type. Well, <laughs> do, do you think, without having dived so deep into that, do you think you now, you know, you're not you're not even 40 yet? No. Nah, do nah. you think you, you, you got that part gripped? Or are you in a transitional phase of like, I'll see, depending on who I choose next? Being, like, like, in other words, being, how many times you got to run into the wall, my bro? I got a hard head. I, got, I, hard head. I, I can take a, a couple I, more. I got, I got, as you can see, I like pain. But yeah, I yeah. Bad. No, no, but honestly, uh, I hope I get it right, bro. I, 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 want, I want a family. I want to have that, you know, and I tell my guys, look, man, I'm trying, I've never been scared to tell somebody my feelings, dog, because I'm not, I've, that's such a stigma that, that men have. Where they're like, yo, I gotta be hard, I gotta be this. And I'm like, look, dog, the same way that I can show you my emotions, I can punch you in the face. Like, I'm not scared of either of them. Right. You know, I don't like fighting, but I ain't scared of fighting. I don't like telling you that shit's going bad, but I'm not scared to do that. Because at the end of the day, how am I, if you're my brother, right, and I'm going through some shit, and you ask me, how's it going? Like, yo, I'm here for you. And I act like a badass. And then you're going through some shit and I ask you how you're going. Then you act like a badass and I get mad at you. What ground do I have to stand on? Right. Like I'm I'm, I'm showing you that I should be the tough guy and doing all that. And what does that lead to, bro? It can lead to something really fucked up. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I, I might have been, I might have been looking for a reason to finally open up to you. But I was looking for it by hoping that you would open up to me. Exactly. And, and, the, minute, and the minute you shelled up and then, you know, the typical male ego comes out and, you shell yours and then you come back at me, but how you doing? And I'm yeah. like, well, fuck it. Well, you know what? He ain't going to tell me. And then maybe I'm not going to tell him. I should have showed up a long time ago because the last two girls that I've had were like, yo, well, why, why you got to, why you got to tell me all that? Like, why? And it's like, oh, hold on. You said too much. Yeah. yeah now nah, I'm like, yeah, nah, 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 nah. uh, I'm going to pass by. But it's just, again, it's the choices you make, dog. And you got to, you got to, you got to fall on that sword. So what's the sword I fall on? I'll fall on the sword of bad relationships a thousand times to see where all my guys have gone because every one of them are better. They've all moved up. They've all gotten better jobs. They've all became better men. They became better husbands. They became, they finally stopped fucking around and, <coughs> and got good girls and settled down with great women. Let, 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 let me tell you this with, without being a bearded villain brother of yours, but let me give you some great advice. And, and I get this from... Studying other people, especially, I'm, I'm, I'm very into, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm over analytical. I admit that with no, with no shame. Same, same. I think the more you analyze, the better, mm. the smarter, the more you're in tune with what's going on. It's a gift and a curse. Y yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to see what, what they call, you know, the devil's in the details or whatever, or do you? Because if you don't look for the details, then you might miss that devil that was showing its face, you know, yeah. if we're going to relate to that, to that, uh, saying, but, um, I've seen more, and shout out to all the real relationships that have made it a long time in a healthy fashion without all kind of smoking mirrors and lying to everybody when we all know that you're going through some shit. Yeah. Because this is a lot fewer than what people think. 100%. I don't care if your parents been together 30 years, 40 years. My parents have been I, uh, together 60 years and live in two different rooms. Don't see, you see what I mean? So <laughs> if, if, if for those couples that made it so far, I guarantee you there's a, a high 70% or better rate that they weren't happy. They weren't fully satisfied. They just did it for the kids. And then 
fuck it, we made it this far. I don't want to, you know, the whole settling, settling, settling. So the reason I say that to you is as, as getting to the, trying to give you some advice is some of the happiest couples that I've ever met, people that I've ever come across, met their significant others late in their lives. And I mean, mid 40s or 40s being early. Yeah. But somewhere in their mid 40s, 50, early 50s. Why? Because they went through the fucking ringer. They went through the, not not you, but baby's mamas or one divorce or two divorce or college or this or that, whatever the hell it is, boom, they went through it. And now in your mid 30s and going on, you realize, okay, that was a whirlwind. There was a lot that I could have done differently. 100%. And I see other good people, but I don't know what they're going through. But you know what? I got a whole nother fucking half of yeah. life waiting for me. So let me not mind fuck myself into some type of, you know, whatever ordeal that would come. And I definitely want to bring that up because you mentioned, you know, the that you did go through a stage of depression. Um, but remind yourself that, no, now I'm going to take my time. Yeah. And now I'm going to make a, the wisest decision I've ever made yeah. without being in a hurry. I know where my bar is at. I know the boxes that I need checked off. I know where I stand in my career with your job and or with your passion, which might take over your career job. You and I had this discussion yes. when we did lunch in regards to the where, where do you want to go next in the entrepreneur life. And when you have all that, that, that comes around right now, 38, yes. 39, 40, 41, 42. That's when that comes because that's when you figure that shit out. Yeah. So for those, not just you, but for those out there who are second guessing life, I'm like, God, I'm not married. I'm fucking 30. This is no, so what? Good for you. Nah, good for you. Chill. Are the kids good? I was there. Is your career good? I know. I was. And I, I definitely, was. I definitely want to hear about that. So when that, when did that portion of depression hit you? And without having to, you know, say too much details nah, if you I don't, don't want to, I don't care. what was it that, that hit, made you go that um, far? And how did you deal so with it? I, I finally went to therapy, man. I'm not going to lie to you. My cousin, um, as always, my right hand man, my, Everything in life, Michael De La Pava, the Battle Axe Gym. Um, he he told me, go to therapy, bro. Go to fucking therapy. You need it. Like, stop bottling this shit up. So shout out to Carlos Espinosa, my, you know, the therapist that I went to. And he told me, man, hey, 38 to 41, you're in your fucking prime. The ratio to women and men is f four women to one man. He's like, bro, you're hitting your stride. Relax. Because I was like, oh, I'm not going to have kids. They're going to kids. Da, 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 da. And he's like, yo. Relax, bro. It's like you're in your prime right now. And he's right. I am. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Okay, but reflecting back to what we were talking about, what I was kind of trying to, and I know, I know you're not trying to avoid it, but, you know, I remember you mentioned, I think this is great that we're talking about this because men... You, you hinted towards it a little bit, maybe about three minutes ago, five minutes ago. Yeah, stigma. Yeah. And and right now, as crazy as it is, our our, our world, our nation, let me not say the world because it's really our nation. 100%. The, the men are being pussified. Yep. The young the young men coming up are being pussified. The, the, the men who are, are us or our generation are like, we're looking to what's happening right now, like what, what the fuck's going on? It's a weird time. And... I don't know that we can stop it, save it, whatever you want to call it. That's a whole nother podcast. Come yeah. back on, <laughs> put Ray on, bring the clan, whatever, and let's, and let's talk shit. But um, men need to see other men, such as ourselves, yeah. admit to being human, man. To being human, to being weak, to being soft at times, to, yeah. to having emotions that to run having, through us. To having, a, I don't want to say weak, but having a weak moment. Weak it's moment, yes, moment. yes, yes, it's yes, fucking, exactly. That's a problem that people think, or men think, that because you're having a moment. That it becomes a. a, a that it defines you. Exactly, right. That it right. defines you. Look, man, I'm going to tell you right the fuck now. I was at a point where I was looking at my own cousin with tears in my eyes. Looking at him and telling him, dog, I don't know why I'm acting like this, dog. This ain't me, bro. Like, my brain is telling me I'm stupid, but my heart don't want to, my heart wants to bleed out right now, dog. Like, and my cousin was just, and, and with tears in his eyes, like, primo, just let it be, bro. Fuck it. You held it in for so many years, dog. Fuck it. 
So when so when this hit you, it wasn't just because of this one chick. It was an it accumulation was, of holding. That was the straw that back broke a lot. The, that, was that was the straw, the and the straw was just a heavy straw. It the, was the like fucking, what she did yeah. was just disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Because I put that lady on her feet, mm-hmm. right? For lack of a better word, you know, to keep her respectful. But I put her on her feet, and she did exactly what messed her up in her life to me, right? So it's one of those where I was blindsided, like, how do you? Do the exact same thing that caused you trauma to the person that put you on your feet. It's a sickness, man. Yo, yeah. But I didn't see it like that. Of course, of course. It's understandable. And everybody around me was already seeing it months in advance. Like, yo, D, what are you doing? Like, D, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you getting this girl the house she wants? What are you doing? Like, But they didn't want to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you see your boy happy. You're like, bueno, you know, let him be, dog. He'll figure it out or hopefully we're wrong. Those are the two things. So my thing is... Not only that, D, I apologize for cutting you off. Mm-hmm. I've had this type of topic. Make sure we come back to this, okay? But I've had this type of topic with, with, with uh, just with friends in general, whatever gender, male, female, because there's only two, by the way. Yeah, 1,000%. <laughs> but um, whatever gender, male, or female that I've had a conversation with, um, <laughs> you see I slid that one in there. Yeah, please. Just want to remind, yeah, remind yeah, whoever's yeah. watching, there's only two. Yes. Um... <laughs> Typically, typically in in <clears throat> in your situation, guys, and I've been on this side of the fucking table, and it, and it and it really left me with like a weird PTSD. Where I had this conversation with my mom a couple years ago, she was like, "Baby, after everything you've been through, you know, this is a lot more than my shit that a lot of people don't know." Mm-hmm. She's like, "After everything you've been through, what's what's one of the main things? You know, we're just having a chill moment over mm-hmm. breakfast. What's one of the main things that you look back on and you're like, man, this is." This is something that I, I wish I could have changed or I definitely won't do anymore now that I'm here. Yeah. And I said, man, mom, I think the I think what I learned the most is you got to let people crash into the wall head first. You are not going to stop. No, that. you're not, man. No and the reason that. I mentioned that is because I think that applies to like 95% of just the I world. I, I think it, it's 100%. It might be 100. You're right. It's a very rare species of a human being who's going to be like, to be because my abuelo said this, yeah. and, and my president, and my brother, yeah. and, and, and so on and so forth, yeah. Danny said this, I am going to break up with this girl who I am pretty much I'm in love with yeah. because he says that things aren't panning out and she's probably going to turn out to be, you know, or whatever, whatever, whatever. So I mentioned that because even if your brothers wanted to, and even if you had a brother that would have been like me and would have pulled you aside and said, Danny, I know, because unfortunately this is how I start these conversations, I know I'm about to waste my time. Yeah, I'm saying. But I want to make sure that you never have the you can ability say to say, say that I didn't do this the way I was supposed to do this. Word. You can never turn back and say, no one pulled me aside and, and let me have it because Wes did. That's, that's, that's how me. I am. Same. But even if I was in that brotherhood or if you would have had brothers who would have done it, you still, in my opinion, would have had to go head first I by yourself. I would have. That's the unfortunate truth. You know, yeah, it is because you know what? I've done it to numerous <laughs> of my guys. And, oh, you've and, done it to them. Yeah, okay, okay, I was okay. Right. I thought, I was how right. are you going to say you hit the wall several and I was times? Right. Some of them ended up with trash baby mamas. And I'm telling them, like, what are you doing? You know, but at the end of the day, it's, and I've told them, like, one of my boys, we have, like, a, a running joke where, like, I sent him the little Miyagi uh, gif where he's going. Like, <laughs> yeah. I told you, motherfucker. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yo, I'm having a Miyagi moment right now, dog. I was right. I told you. Mm. And, but at the end of the day, look, bro, men, women, whatever it is, you're looking for a partner in your life. And if somebody catches you at the right moment, and whispers them sweet nothings in your ear mm-hmm. and makes you feel comfortable mm-hmm. in them four walls, mm-hmm. right? Not outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside is a different thing. I'm right? with you. Yeah, we're, we're a different persona outside. But if you mm-hmm. get home and that person's your peace long enough, even if they're faking it, got you. You're falling into it, I'm and ain't you. nobody gonna tell you nothing yeah. about that because you ain't taking. Because they ain't away. there. You they ain't, ain't there. Yeah. You ain't taking this white picket fence away from right, me. Right, right, right. Like I'm almost there. Yeah. And just because you had bad experiences, and, and not only are you almost there, you've never had this. Yeah, you know, never. this this is what you've been never. looking for. Seen, you've yeah. been waiting for. You yeah. deserve it. You deserve yeah. it. You've been yeah. through enough. You deserve yeah. this. And ain't nobody over there gonna fuck this up. Yeah. And but you don't say if I'm gonna crash and burn, I'm gonna do it on my own. But that's 
Typically, what's happening? Honestly, you believe the motherfucking person, bro. You believe this motherfucker that's not gonna do shit to you because yeah. you've had these fucking pillow talk conversations where they're like, yeah. "Man, I've been cheating on beating," da, 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 da. and you're like, oh, "Okay, I'm gonna take care of you and do it all right for you." Yeah. Da, da, da. And then both of you are fucking <coughs> lying to each other at this point, and that's it is what it is, bro. You gotta crash and burn because it's like the fucking stove, dog. Your mom's gonna tell you not to touch it, and what yeah, are you gonna do? Yeah. Why? Why put not, mom? I gotta find out. Put your, you know what's the one thing I never did, but I was infatuated with it was. <clears throat> my brother when he told me not to join a gang but uh, apparently i started my own <laughs> in retrospect to a certain extent you know, you know isn't, it, isn't it crazy how, how you know uh, whatever it's just a fucking terminology whether it's on wikipedia uh webster dictionary mm -hmm. whatever what's a gang oh it's a, it's a group of people who blah 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 blah, blah. however you want to word it listen fraternity brothers they're a gang an intelligent gang I, I've what, what do you want to call a gang? I've call it what at, you want. I've been at plenty of frat parties where the motherfuckers jump plenty of people, Papa. Yeah, and brother. And wild like, shit. And their, yes. little, and their little docker shorts. And yeah. they're getting, <laughs> getting down. Yeah, so yeah. It, look, man, at the end of the day. But we, we, really, but at, yes. at, at the end of the day, well, the most important part of what I was you know, bringing it up for is you, you went through this you know, depression. It hit you. And it was the brotherhood that came to your. 100%. Your I, rescue, per se. It's. There's been plenty of moments I've wanted to walk away from this. And I've looked my guys dead in the face and told them I don't want to do this shit no more. I'm tired. And all my guys, I've literally been threatened. <laughs> you are not stepping out as president because we would walk away too. Are you going to walk away from something you built? Are you going to let it crash and burn because you decided you want to walk away? Was that because the responsibility was uh, over was overbearing? I, I, or was, I mean, it be, was it because you lost another woman? No. And you, you kind of blamed no, it on no, the president? Yes. So the last one. Play a little I, bit of role. Well. I wanted to walk away before that, right? I've okay. Had, so there's been eight years, so there's been moments where so I'm just like, So this is a tough thing to do. Yeah, you know, after I had the mini stroke, you know. Of course, or, right. You know, uh, just moments, man. Yes, after that breakup, I was thinking all sorts of shit. I'm not going to lie to you. But at the end of the day, it's moments like that, right, where we finish, either we finish a, a big event and we've raised $40,000 or... I'm going through some shit and my brothers are showing up to my door like, what, what did we talk about earlier? I'm not going to tell you to show up for me, right. motherfucker. Right. You better show up for me if you're about that. On your own, yeah. And my guy showed up. You know, Ray being one of them. At all times, right there with me, dog. And it's like, moments where I'm just sitting there, dog, and, dog, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tough, bro. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, dog, then tears start coming out of my eyes. I'm like, <clears throat> what the fuck, bro? And, dog, my dogs are just like, yo, just let it ride, D. Yeah. You not like we oh, we know you're human, bro. Yeah, you ain't always gotta be the tough. Like let you, it out. You know, I had a I had a train a client today this this morning, and um, long story short, you know, he was uh just disclosing personal information going on in, in, in his household and all that riffraff, and you know, we were we were we did it in between our session, during our session, and then uh, we were done with our session, and I thought, all right. I'm not trying to kick this brother out. You know, I've, I've grown, I've always, I always grow close with my mm. clients. It just yeah. happens. We, we grow, you know, yeah, yeah, brother or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Females, males, you know, we grow really close. And, um, I've, I've only known this brother for a couple of months, but it's, it's grown really quick and fast. Awesome stand up dude. Anyhow, short, long story short, I, I felt like he needs to get more off his chest and I, and I need to be here for him. No. And I'm not that close to him. And I'm not trying to, and I and I must have told him three or four times, hey man, I hope I'm not coming off like I'm Mr. Fucking Know It All, or I'm your family counselor, or, or um um, you're talking to a motherfucker who, who's barely had many girlfriends, never been married, got no kids, went to prison, whatever. Mm -hmm. I know what I look like, and I so don't please don't let no no go ahead, West man, I, lo I love you know go ahead. I go well, you know I'm just just want to give my little two cent, but anyhow, that more the story is. He didn't need my two cents. He just needed somebody to just reach out to. And and he even admitted himself. He's like, bro, I haven't told none of my closest friends that I've known for 15, 20 years about my PTSD from from so on and so forth back in Afghanistan, this and that. I haven't told this, this and that. And my friends don't know that I went through this with my whatever, whatever, significant other. And I, you know, I just keep trying to remind him, listen, man, I'm honored, bro. I appreciate that you, you know, you're telling me this. And I just want to let you know that I'm here. Yeah. Not in no Stupid ass people, I'm here for you. No, like dead ass. Like, yo, you want to go vent some more? Let me know. Let's go have a beer. Let's go this. I'm that type of dude. What I'm saying is I wish more fellas would be like that, not be like me. I just wish more fellas when they would see, when they know their their man's, their homeboy mm. is, is going through something. 
But you know he's gonna, you know, you know he's gonna toughen up. You know yeah. he's not gonna admit it. Yeah. Man, force it. Force yeah. it. Force yeah. that shit. Don't force him to admit it. He's not gonna admit it. Just force it. Hey, let's go out. Hey, let's go, let's go have dinner. Hey, go to, you know. That's what I push upon the brotherhood, man. All the guys. I tell them, I'm like, yo, talk to them. Yeah. You know, at the beginning, some you know, sometimes and I'm 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 guilty of this as well. It's like, yo, that motherfucker hasn't come to a meeting in three months. Fuck it, he's out. Until somebody was like, yo, D, why don't we... Might be oh, going through something. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, hold on, dog. And I'm like, fuck yeah, you're right, man. That's a dickhead. Right. Like, let me reach out. Yo, so-and-so, reach out to him. Make sure he's straight. And if he's not, then we show up at his crib. And that's what we do. Because at the end of the day, 99% of the time when we're going through some shit, we're going to bottle that bitch up. Yep. Because we're men. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've always had a rule, dog. You got I, got, I got five minutes in my shower to get rid of my shit, dog. <laughs> whatever the fuck I'm going through, bro. Whatever fucking bullshit I'm going through. Whatever tears are gonna come out of me, dog. They're gonna they're gonna drain with the water that, yeah. I, that, I, that that's coming out my shower. I like how you say that. You know what bro. I'm saying? Yeah. And as soon as I open up my fucking door and I walk out that shower, yeah, that that's right it, there. dog. That's it. It's game time. I gotta right. provide for my family. I gotta pay the bills. I gotta pay my employees. I gotta make sure the club's straight. Let you know me what I'm let, let me ask you something on a on a um, male to female note. Do you think, not just because of what you went through, because you've been through it a couple of times, but because you're an older dude and you got a, you know, a plethora of brothers and you know what they go through, so your experience is a lot more than your average person. Excuse me. Um, do you think that women, not all of them, I'm not blasting on anybody, but do you think you know too much, too, too much, it needs to be less. Do you think too many women, when we do, if they entice us enough, if they convince us enough to open up, let it out. Talk to me. You're what is it? What are you feeling? You're and fine. if, 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 because a lot of times the man would always hold back. They just won't give it all because no, you, you, this isn't going to go right. Whatever the ego, whatever and it depends on the relationship that they have with the individual. But if a woman convinces the man, the boyfriend, the husband, the fiance, the best friend, the lover, whatever the fuck it is, stop holding it in. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Whether it's relationship bound, stress bound, whatever it is. Do you think that when that situation rarely happens and that man opens up full blown, floodgates? Yeah. Floodgates. PTSD. If tears come out, they come out. Anger, whatever. Motion, I'm going to let this go. This girl said I can do it. I'm going to do it. Do you think that the average woman who receives that doesn't react the right way according to the up. man? You see? That's the fucked up part, right? Right. But it's true. A woman wants testosterone, bro. That's what she wants. And this, it, it, now, I, I don't I, want, I don't want just your opinion. I'm I, not saying all of them, right? I'm, I'm going through what, number one, I've been through, and number two, I've seen. Okay, that's why. I want, I want, even, I want the women hearing this to understand yet. that you're not just saying this as a nah, man nah. who's being, you know, uh, nah, nah, boastful nah, nah. on some Even my homegirls, even, even some of my homegirls. Uh, like, like, look, I'll tell I, you that when he yeah, did that, I'm not going to lie yeah, to you. I fucking, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, because even after this situation that I went through, I've bumped into girls like this. I'm not gonna change who the fuck I'm, I am right now, right? I'm gonna be who the fuck I am. If I'm if I'm with you, and you ask me for that, that's the best thing you can ask for. Cause now you're setting that line. If the reaction that I get out of you is not right, then I don't want to be with you for the rest of my life, right? Right. right. I want to be able to come home to my girl, and just like I tell you, cause every girl that's been on a, every one of you that's been on a date with me, <laughs> no, everyone, no, everyone, when we go to a restaurant. <laughs> I always face the door. Mm -hmm. When you walk to the car, I always open your goddamn door. When we sleep together, I sleep on the side of the door. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I take care of my shit. When we're walking on the road, I'm walking on the road. Of the, I'm, I'm walking on the side of the where the cars are coming. I know what I'm doing to protect you. But if you're giving me that vulnerable <clears throat> point where we're at home, I'm not going to fucking let my feelings out at a restaurant to you. But if we're home and you tell me, yo, What's going on? You look like you're having a rough day. I'll look at you and be like, you really want me to tell you? All right, let's go. Pour up some Jameson and be like, ba 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 This is where I'm at. And if I see you change with me, good. Now right. I know <clears throat> you ain't the one because I have. But unfortunately, that change comes slow and gradual. It doesn't happen right there. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You start no, realizing, no. yo, shit changed ever since I fucking cried that night and, and told her, you know, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And here so you are three months be, later. So be it, dog. So, and and it, it's, yeah. it sucks. Right. It does. It sucks. But you know what, dog? 
So on advice, advice to women, women listening right now. Be they, careful they, what you ask for. Yeah, that, do that, you that, really that, want that? At the end of the day, that no, is, that saying, is the I'm best advice. Saying, You're right, I'm but that saying, sucks that it is. I'm not saying tell your man to be vulnerable. Because if you don't want him to be vulnerable, then bitch, don't ask for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't. Yeah, fuck don't it. Don't yeah. ask for it. Right. Dog. I'm not asking... I'm not asking for something out of a girl that I don't want to see, dog. Mm. I don't want... if See, a lot of motherfuckers claim to want a threesome until you see your girl getting real down with a bitch and stop ignoring you in the middle of that shit. Uh, exactly. Now, where's your head at? Yeah, yeah. Now you're like, yo, is she a whole girl <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. She, the, the, she looking like she ain't even... Like, she done this before. I, after this, is she going to want really another female? Want that? Yeah. Do you really right. want that? Do right. you want to open... That fucking door, dog. Pandora, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Maybe you do, dog. Maybe you get down like that. That's cool for you, whatever. I'm not judging either of it. But as a woman, don't ask somebody to be vulnerable if you're going to look at your man different. Damn. Because you know what, dog? Yeah. Every motherfucker. I don't give a fuck how bad, how tough you think you are, dog. You want a girl that you can be like, dog, today sucked, bro. Today fucking, I'm, I'm sick of life, bro. Right. This shit's tough, bro. Right. You know, watching my dad go through cancer, my mom go through this, you know, like it's fucking rough, dog. It's yeah. fucking rough. When am I going to catch a break, dog? <clears throat> like, why can't I tell that to my girl, dog? You know what, though? There's a girl out there that's going to be willing to listen. You're right, though. It might be the girl in the office. It might be the girl that you're buying your coffee from every day. The same way. But, it, but there's it, a motherfucker ready to rub your girl's back if you ain't rubbing. If you ain't back, rubbing it back, yeah, uh, it goes both ways. Yo, homie. well said. It goes well both said. ways. It goes both ways. And and I, and I would say on on not to close it, but to 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 end that main point, like ladies, like listen to what he just said. If your man's opening up to you, or if you realize your man is corked up, he's got a lot of shit just built up. You you known it from being with him long enough, or you realize it within a short amount of time. Don't give him that exit route. Don't give him that green light if you think it's going to really just turn you off. If you want, I don't know why a woman would be turned off like that unless you just want some overly macho gangster ass dude that really because most women not don't all want. Of you, not, not all of you. I'm saying not all of you. Most women are fucking evil, dog. <laughs> <laughs> they are dog Cause they are they You sound, are. You sound like my homeboy they Come are, on you bro no, 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 But they are bro Look I, And it's not to say Look man I got I got a best friend that's a, that's a girl I love her to death Shout out to Erica She's always there Dog I've been super vulnerable You know I got another friend Laura Super great girl bro Super people that Any guy that ends up with them they, you can open up to girls like that. There is girls that exist. Yeah, of and course, I personally of course. know them. Right. So I'm not. That's why I said not all girls. Right. But most of them, especially in this city, dog. Yeah. Evil as fuck, dog. Yeah. It's this city makes you that. Bro. Yeah. See, and we definitely have to clarify Same that. Same thing you said well, that. It's true. Is, <clears throat> this city makes men, uh, you know, a lot of men trash. I get that too, bro. Big but cities I'm not dating do that, men, so right? I can't tell you that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, I'm telling you who I'm dating. Let's right? make that clear that we're not fucking uh, putting guys on a pedestal at all, nah. whatsoever. Nah. No, no, no. But we're saying Humans that, we're, in general. yeah. But we're saying when you get a good guy, no matter how manly, gangster, whatever the fuck he is, when he, when, when you know he's probably yearning to open up, to spill out some built up whatever frustration. Don't give them, don't give them the green light if you're not willing to really accept what comes after that. If you think it's gonna, you know, I, I agree with you on that. And I think I think this is just a, a also, mild piece of advice also to women out there. If you don't give them that green light, somebody will. Exactly, and then there goes the reach. Yeah, that's on you. That's on you, man. That's what a relationship <clears throat> is about. You think I want to be fucking going shopping with my girl for the shit she wants, or I don't know, whatever the fuck, but going to some shit that she wants to? No, sometimes I don't, bro. But there's a motherfucker way to act like they want to go to that shit. Right. For the first couple of months, because mm -hmm. there's always that little... I mean, love it. Yeah, the little love phase, it, yeah. Stage, bro. I'm going to do whatever you want. Da, 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 da. There's always that, bro. But at the end of the day, the same way you want it, we want it too, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Make your life a lot easier and just be open-minded to like, yo, what are you going through? I mean that. What's up? But if you don't want it, don't open that box. After all that you've been through with the, the few relationships you've had, as deep as you are into the brotherhood, pretty much everything we just stated, and here you are in your late 30s, have you thought about this deep enough where you're like, hey, maybe this city is not where I should be looking. Maybe I'm not going to look for the next couple of years. If it lands on my lap and it makes sense, I'll entertain it. You've been through enough. <laughs> where you where you at? Because because as of a year ago, right I was now, I was my cousin's uh, laughing at this question right now because he knows what my answer is gonna be. As, well, as of a year ago, I was like, man, I'm just gonna focus on all me, 
I'm not trying to go out there and just fuck around, entertain multiple chicks and this. I've and never been so like, I've never been the kind of fuck around. I've never been. That. I don't yeah, like okay. giving off my energy like that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like, too much I'm, energy to give out. I'm trying yeah, to focus I on everything else around. Like, like, so I'm, like before, yeah. Where where, where are you at now mentally with all that? I should be better at focusing on myself, which I do. Don't get me wrong. Um, and again, my cousin's been a very big backbone to that to help me. Um, but I need to get better at that because I do want that. I do want that. Because I see my brothers showing up with their girls to the meeting, you know, to to events or, you know, I'm I'm at 38. I don't I don't have any kids. I didn't want kids for a while just because I don't want to be baby daddy every other weekend. And, and the odds, you know, are against you, right? Of course, in yeah. the city with that. But it's <clears throat> it's one of those things where I gotta find I gotta find the balance in that. Which you know, my cousin hates that word, and so many people hate that word. But it's the truth where it's like. I don't want to close the door on that, but I'm definitely not focused on it. I'm not because at the end of the day, I know what I got to offer, Wes. I got my own company. I take care of whoever I'm with. I take care of my family. I, I'm no bum. I wake up every morning and I can't not Put that go bar to work. high, bro. Put yeah, that bar high. Yeah, exactly. So that's where I'm at where it's, you know, I obviously have a type. I'm a little shallow sometimes with that bullshit, mm. but life has kind of humbled my ass. Like, hey, you like these... uh you like this thing and it's like okay bro i'm gonna give it to you mm. at his top tier here you go bro el bombon de los bombones <laughs> this is what you wanted bro and they fucked my whole life up i'm like god damn All yeah right. you, you gotta you gotta be your toughest critic yeah i know but it's you, true you don't need your brothers to tell you you know this if you ain't gonna, look <clears throat> uh, if you're gonna go through shit and life's gonna give you a lesson if you ain't learning you're an idiot right you know so you gotta take it like okay dog i gotta learn something from this shit sooner or later because if not but right now it's i'm Especially with what happened this week with, you know, our nonprofit going to that next level. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely focused more on myself. Have you given yourself, I did it, I don't want to say when I was in your shoes, but, you know, uh, hypothetically, I had a, I had an age cap for, if I'm willing to entertain having a kid, it better be at this time. I can only speak for myself, okay? And I, I don't need to battle back and forth with you like I've done with so many people in the past about, you know, oh, but if you're 40 and you have a kid, you can still run around. Listen, I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about I don't want to alter my life more than a fucking kid already is going to yeah. alter your life. And, and and people who know me close enough, I love kids, but I also say fuck them kids. And I say it very often. Get ready for this shirt. It's coming out. FTK. Save, Can't save, nobody take it. Same. So, same. I'll buy like five. I'm all about that. I'm about, like literally the same. And exactly. by the way, if FTK will be fuck them kids, fuck those kids, fuck these kids. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 amazing, you know, creations, and I know that you know great people step up as awesome parents and so on and so forth. But what I do think is that I don't. I think I know it. I don't need to think it. People don't give enough thought into just how life altering this is going to be. I just saw this it's again. No I just saw this again. You. I want you guys to remember this in case you don't know this stat. All right, and I'm probably going to miss the numbers by a couple of thousand. Fucking of murder patient. me. From raising a kid in. The United States, on average, from the age of born to fucking seventeen, not even eighteen, on average is three hundred and uh, was it three hundred flat, whatever. Oh, now with inflation, give or take. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> so about three hundred and twenty some grand to raise that little yeah. fucking ungrateful piece of shit who's gonna just go through. It. You know, one of those things. I get into that zone where it's like, hey man, if well, love hit me, you're I rolling the dice because you are. At the end of the day, look, yeah. I know plenty of horrible people that come from great parents just like i know great people that come from horrible parents so you're rolling the dice so people are like oh it's all about how you raise them nah it's not it's not and i'm not bashing that at the end of the day you are rolling the dice you know what i'm saying but it is a beautiful thing to bring a kid into the world i kind of get that you know i, I get that part of it but and, I, and, I, I, and, it's not my it's not gonna break my life if i don't and, and, and by the way i i just realized this as i started ranting I, I feel horrible talking this shit about having a kid in this fucking mother's day Ouch. ladies <laughs> ladies you guys are awesome you guys are the reasons that we have a, a, a world in front of us um i apologize it's just not it's not for me fuck them kids <laughs> Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. 
No doctor prescription is required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So anyhow, ladies, on that note, it is Mother's Day. We really appreciate you guys. There's, there's nothing better than having a loving mother. And um, we all know that parenthood is, is literally the most difficult task there is in the world. And there's nothing more difficult than being the actual mother yes, itself. So, I mean, you're giving life, man. Yeah, man. So on that note, you know, we appreciate you guys. Happy Mother's Day. I'm glad I don't have no baby's mamas. Same. Cheers to you not having to say <laughs> and let's and let's move forward. By the way, bro, on a personal note, and I don't like to get deep into this, you know. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my homeboy Marcos uh Concepcion. You know, he was reaching out to me, he was talking to me about, you know, getting together and doing a podcast. We haven't done well, done haven't done one in a while. And um you know, he was mentioning the whole uh, gender or shit or deal and all that's going on and, and Listen, I don't mind talking about certain topics. Mm. I don't want to say hot topics. Yeah. What the fuck makes it hot? Why? Because all you idiots are talking about it? No. Because it's clickbait. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm not a clickbait motherfucker. Yeah. That, yeah. My podcast has grown to where it's grown in slow, gradual steps because I'm authentic, bro. Yeah. That's why you're here because of the energy, because of the vibe, because of the nieces, because of the, cause of, you know, all these people that we surround ourselves with. Yeah. So I don't chase clickbait or stuff like that. But, you know, he did mention a topic that... I hate to talk about it because I, I feel like I'm entertaining stupidity. I think that's what they're pre that's what they're selling right now, though. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, um, like, like, shout out to my homeboy Chris. You know, he right now he's posted in our group chat or on Instagram anything that anything that just totally makes fun of the debacle of this gender ordeal and how we have so many women's records being broken. That's just crazy. By men who identify as women and all that, right? And well, what Marcos had brought up was, you know, he's a he's a personal trainer, a, a head leader, whatever at uh, Orange Theory. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of uh, women uh, friends and followers, and and th this must be a hot topic for them, you know. Again, as a trainer, you vibe with your people, you get close to them. Yeah, I guess evidently they're all talking about it, and maybe he was a little riled up, and he wanted to, you know. I mean, it's all over social media. But, yeah. And, but again, this is nothing against Marcos. I love my bro. Um, I don't want to entertain that shit. There's only fucking two genders. And all this identified bullshit can, can just gee, just jump off the highest building, no rope. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't... Why we want to talk about it? If you believe in that, we don't need to be in the same area. We don't need to converse. We don't need to... There's no, there's no need for a debate. There is no debate. There is no debate. You're the one looking... For, now, again, guys, I'm not talking about Marcos or his people... Those people who believe in that uh, ordeal, the, the, the genders and the this, and the, you should well, be able to identify who you much, want. They're feeding it so much to you, to you through social media and everything. Yeah, of that course. It just becomes a topic of conversation, right? And that's what they want. They want all that destructive bullshit and all that. I bet, I bet as a, and you did mention earlier, by the way, I'm not going to let you just get off the hook completely. <laughs> you made it seem like, it, you know, you, you, you we, you didn't determine an actual cap as to like, all right, if I don't have, if I don't reach this lady by this age, by this whatever, I'm not having a kid. Have you decided that? I just decided that I wanted a kid right now. Before I didn't. Because <clears throat> I'm, I'm, so both my brothers have to deal with baby mamas. A bunch of my friends got to deal with baby mamas that don't let them see their, their kids. And I don't associate. If you're not a good father, I'm not going to fuck with you. I'm mm. not. I can't deal with that. Like, I don't... You decided to bring this kid into... There's always been the conversation with every girl that I've been with where it's like, oh, what if I'm pregnant? It's your decision. Whatever you want, I'm a man up to it. You want to go have an abortion? <coughs> I'll pay for it. I'm going to have you pay for it. You want to have the kid? I'm going to be a father and I'm going to be there the whole time. Right? But understand that if you want to have the kid, I'm going to be there the whole time. So we better figure this shit out. So... Before it was just I didn't want to become baby daddy. You're not gonna like because not gonna say females. Just people in general think that they have so much selections because of Instagram. Mm -hmm. Just because they get mm -hmm. some of these little likes Course, or these right, little right. comments where they this isn't they good enough. Jump, yeah, they they can jump ship right away. Yeah, exactly. Right, they don't want to figure it out. And they'll jump ship. And six I'll, figure, six two, yeah. tall, dark, handsome. And I'll be damned if you tell me <clears throat> that I can only see my kid every other weekend. Because if mm. I want to wake up in the middle of the fucking night 
and go give my kid a kiss on the forehead porque me salió del corazón to do it, you're not going to stop me from doing that. So that's the part that scared me, right? So now it's, I would like to. Is there a cap to it? No, there isn't. Am I going to be sad because I don't? No, it's not my end all be all because at the end of the day, I'm helping kids for a living, right? Right. Um, th- I found this. That's what I my, say all the time. Yeah, I found this to be my passion. Like I, I know that if I don't have my own, not only am I impacting kids at the hospital, kids in the inner city, but I'm impacting my nephews and my nieces, um, and not only my blood nephews, but and those nieces, from the brotherhood, but of those course, from the brotherhood. Yes, and and I'm very involved, and I and I make sure that I buy them their gifts, <clears> and, <throat> and and I show up to birthday parties for them, things I wouldn't do before. In in a, in, a, in a nation right now that's politically separated. Like, uh, you know, ever since, I mean, Trump, there's never been, ever since Trump, there's never been such a divide mm. in our country. Mm. And I don't even need to stir up of where you're at or who you believe in or who you voted or none of that shit, you know, whatever, whatever's clever, bro. But does your brotherhood go through that? Is that something that you guys... Yeah, we argue about that all the time. With our and you do it friendly? It's okay? You're left, no, I'm so, right? So you're this, no. you're that? Yeah, There's yeah, no... there, there is that. There is that. I'm not, but you guys, I'm you, not gonna say who's who and what's what. But you don't... But you don't, you don't you, as, as the president of the club... I have to, I have don't to Don't you be say, that. hey guys, let's yeah. not go there. Let's right, not go yes, there. Yes, yes. Yeah. 100%. Because I, I, yeah. I have to... Two conversations you don't have in the chat is religion and politics. There you go. There you go. And that's how you save friendships. And yeah, do I let yeah, it, it's, do it's I let it go approach. for a little bit? Do I let it go for a little bit? Yeah, or, or maybe with certain like, brothers in privacy, you know, yeah. depending. But, or there's but. just there's certain guys that are left and right where they're just they fuck with each other and it's jokingly, right? Like okay. they get it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when one wants to stop, he'll just stop responding, and that'll be the end, you know. Where <clears throat> before, and yeah, there's been times where somebody wants to punch somebody in the face. That's testosterone, bro. It's gonna happen. It's my job as the president and leader to understand that I, even though I have a side that I pick, I gotta be smart enough to be like, shut up, both of you go to your corners. Mm. Like, this isn't what we're here for. Mm. And there's been times where some of my guys are like, hey man, we should, you know, protest this. And I'm like, we're not a protesting group, bro. We're here to help kids. That's difficult to, to maintain that balance. And I'm yeah. sure you probably have certain chapters that do. Oh, 100%, especially you know? the whiter people. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be real about it, you know? But it is, and, and there is guys, again, look, we're part of a brotherhood, but we've grown so much that we've kind of outgrown the brotherhood itself. We're the black sheep in hey. the brotherhood. Yeah, we are. We are. Like, the, no no bullshit. They haven't kicked us out of this brotherhood because they know that we are the bar. And it's not to try any other chapter. Cause of course I'm not. not. Yeah. I'm right. not, man. I'm not. But at the end of the day, I know what we've built. Right. I know what we've done. You want to own that uniqueness Nobody, that you guys stand nobody's for. Nobody's sitting in corporate offices the way we do. Nobody's calling themselves presidents the way that I have. Nobody's done what we do. And I do it to, and I'll turn around and look at other chapters like, this is what you got to do. Right. Let's go. Not, hey, man, do it like me. No, come on, man, do it like me. Please. I'm almost begging you to do it like me. And if you don't want to do it like me, I'm all right. Because at the end of the day, whether, you know, pun intended, whether this ship sinks or sails, Miami's going to be who Miami is. Right. Because that's who we are. Right. Always have. Regardless. And it's yeah. not just the bro. The way that people think about Miami, you don't even have to be part of the brotherhood to understand. The way you think about Miami and everybody else thinks about Miami in the brotherhood, we are Miami. We do whatever the fuck we want. And we're gonna do it our way, and we don't disrespect nobody. We don't cross any lines, but this is what we do, and we set the bar. And on that note, you guys—if I'm correct me if I'm not—if uh, I'm mistaken, you guys just came out with a, a dope ass jersey, or is it, yeah. or is it just all around the the? No, the so look, I mean, design, well, I mean we got we got a bunch of merch, obviously, because that's how we fund you know ninety five percent of all our charity events besides donors. Um, but the jersey's really been a niche, man. Like Looks dope. Looks fire. Yeah. yeah, man. So the, the the jersey's really been a big hit, especially overseas. And it's funny, man. We get so much more support overseas than we do at home. But that's just you know that's what that's Miami. so Miami, that's dude. So Miami. Fuck. Is, if you're is. a doll fan, if you're a Heat fan, if you're any fan, you it know is. that these they only come the around day, when the bandwagon's going. At the other day, uh, uh, one uh, one of uh, uh, one of one of the homies, uh, 
004, he posted, um, why is it that I put out this product and everybody loves it except Miami? And it's like, I don't understand what it is about Miami, man. It's so odd, Where dude. One of your people is flourishing, <clears throat> it's and so you want to go against yeah. the grain, but you got so many other people outside of this city showing love and like, damn man, what you guys are doing is great. And if we had that backing, now don't get me wrong, we're starting to get that backing, right, right, it's building, and I love it, you know. But I guess this is just a city where you gotta eat shit for a bit and prove yourself for people to finally come around. I think that it's a it's a very common trait, but be, between all the big cities. When you're up there in the upper enchilada, when you're in the premium, you know, top shelf of liquors, you have a certain whatever. And we're talking about the L.A.s, the New Yorks, the Miamis, um, maybe the Atlantas, uh, you know, big cities. Yeah. It's just different. Competition is different. Eagles different, this and that. Now, Miami's so different. Multiply that by 10 because we got... I don't know how many ethnicities do we have in Miami. There's just nothing like it. It's not. It's not to praise us. It's, it's just the it's, truth. It's not even the ethnicity. I just think the ego here. Because of the ethnicities, so we got these Cubans, thing. these Venezuelans, these Southerners, these New Yorkans, these LAs, these. You know what I think it is. Though? Russians in Fort Lauderdale and this like. I this. think it's the money, bro. Of course. The fucking money, bro. Yeah. Like everybody yeah. just looks at it like if I show love, I'm my <clears> pie, <throat> that my piece of the pie is gonna be smaller. And I'm like you. What? Yeah. Like I show I show so much love to everybody, bro. Everybody that knows me. To the point where they're like, "Yo, why? What's your what, why are you showing so much love?" Because that's who I am, dog. Right, like, right. Why do I got to fake? Dog, I gotta, I'm done being the fucking 18 to 25 year old yeah. I used to be where I got to be ice grilling you the whole time, dog. L- like, let me let me ask you. Have, do you ever watch Drink Champs by any chance? I do. Okay. I love Drink Champs. <laughs> Shout out to Drink Champs. Noriega. DJ EFN, um, fucking phenomenal podcast, uh, especially if you're a hip hopper and all that stuff. It's just yeah, a yeah, great yeah. podcast, and they represent and Miami local, the South. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So shout out, support shout the out, fuck out of yeah, them. Yeah. Um, but they just had Ricky Ross on, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't. Me bringing this up is not about Rick Ross. Yeah. You can feel however you want about Rick Ross. I think Rick Ross is amazing. I think he represents Miami like Me a motherfucker too. and all that other bullshit. But. Um, Rick Rob was was talking about something that's on our level, and I say that because he's fucking multi millionaire, multi one of the right? most expensive residents in, all that, in Atlanta and this and that, yeah. whatever. So, but he's he's talking about how he hates seeing. You guys can look up the clip. He's talking about how he hates seeing people not support their own people. Yeah. Like when I look at a post that I put, we can all see who viewed it. Yeah. But they don't like it. No. Nah. And I don't need to tell you this. You motherfuckers know this. If you want to show some support, like it. Don't just view it. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Look, man, I grew up on it's, that. It's song, the so. quickest, easiest thing. We're literally telling you, if you want to show support to the bearded villains, if they post it, like it. Why? The algorithms is now going to show Work their posts more and more yeah. and more. And that's how you show the support. You don't got to go leave drop a, a donation. Though, you don't got to. If you, you want to go extra, leave a comment. Yeah. It's that little bit goes... But yet you look back and these same motherfuckers are leaving comments and liking All celebrities. Yo, yo. Uh, uh, only fan bitches. <laughs> I don't get that. The stupidest shit. fucking like, thing. No, you know what the worst part is to me? Is when they hit you up like, yo, that jersey's fire. Okay, the link's here. Like, you're expecting me to tell you I'm going to give it to you for free. Right. You want that handout. Yeah. Like, me and you ain't even that cool. Yeah. But you want me to give it to you. You know where the link is in my bio, son. I like sometimes I even put the link in the post. Right. If you like it so much, why ain't you buying it? Support. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, but you want me to, you want a handout. Like, right. you think that my shit's so small that I'm supposed to give it to you. And it's like, dog, I got people in, in Europe buying this. Why right. are you in buying it? Right. You, I grew up with you. Exactly. But you know what it is? Because at one point or another, they ain't like you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in, in, inside of them. So they never tell you that. But it's just, that's the way it is, man. Because it's like, they some of these motherfuckers are 40 years old still carrying that high school animosity. Of course. Of which course. Is fucking it's fucking weird. You're so accurate on that right fucking now. Fucking weird. That's some dog. real psychological like, shit. Like, dog, you still <clears throat> carrying animosity from high school, dog. Like, where are you at in your life doing this? And, 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 then, there, and then there, bro, there's people that they feel like when they see how successful you're being, they start. They start they, exactly. They start relaying it to the, where they're at in life, and they might. They might be pretty good, by the way. 
they might have the two kids, three kids, white picket fence, wife, and a corporate job. They like, they fucking envy how you're looking. But it's not that they envy they, it. Again, it goes back to they go, they, 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 they tie know, it to dog. something they, in they, the past. They, they go way back to the, I ain't like this motherfucker. Why is he successful? Because you thought that your opinion was the end all be all motherfucker. And Especially it wasn't. back then. And that's yeah. why I didn't give a fuck about your opinion. And it's hard and for I you to swallow this what pill. what the fuck I did. Right. And people love what the fuck I do. And your shit ain't shit. It ain't. Now you're mad at it because everybody ain't thinking the way you thought. Now it's the <clears> weird <throat> part to me is the whole oh nice jersey or hey man where's the event or oh da, 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 oh what you're doing is amazing. Why haven't you fucking showing up to any of our events? Right, bro? one event, but you'll fucking wait in line to go to a fucking Carol G concert, Drake concert, <laughs> this and that, fucking people. It's so true, bro. It's so accurate. You'll, I, repo you'll repost Carol. You, you, look at the <coughs> guy, the, the fucking I don't even know the hype. Beast, whatever, no se que pinga, that was giving away all this money last week. Beast, yeah, beast, yeah, beast. All these motherfuckers reposting that shit. But when I tell you to repost my event that's raising fucking money for kids with cancer, I can't get a repost? That's crazy, bro. But you're going to repost this guy, which, by the way, how many of y'all want money? Yep. Yeah, that's there you go. I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. Like, and, and by the way, and, and, and that's not even to talk shit about uh, Beast. Um, it's Beast, right? I'm Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, Mr. Mr. Beast does a lot of great things and all that. It's not about that. It's it's is if you guys are gonna show that much support for him, why can't you show it locally to somebody you know even who who who's doing a good thing? Yeah. it's not even like we're making profits off putting something like for your city. Like, exactly, anywhere we go as a club, we're carrying Miami on our back. Do you guys know who Dissum is? Dissum three hundred five. Yes, I do. That's my brother right there, man. Shout out to my yeah. yeah Shout out to my boy. That that motherfucker takes that Miami shit so to heart, and I love him for it, bro. I love that he's like as he should. I, I, exactly, you know, as like don't you do it for your last name, for your family, for your bloodline, for the all the uh, uh the alma mater of, of the college you went to, like. That's the city you grew up in. This is the city that's giving you the opportunity that you are now uh, taking advantage of. Why would you not do that? It's a very crazy thing, bro. It really is crazy that Miami people are the way they are. The, the competitive city. aspect. That it's just crazy. It's not even competitive because who the f how are you competing against me? I'm a beard club. Do you have a beard club? <clears throat> I don't get it. Yeah. Like, just support the shit, dog. Like, I, shout out to my brother Gans. I will buy art from Gons before I buy art from another artist right, from another right, city. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, I rather support locally, and I say this to when I when I meet other, you know, when I meet with other companies to put money down, where I'm like, hey, look, I get it, man. You might not want to do charity, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. Let's let's call it a pizza shop, right? I'll go buy from the local pizza shop that's in the community before I go buy it. Pizza Hut, of course. That's owned by some guy that lives. I don't know. I'm, I don't even know where the guy from the right. Pizza Hut. But let's just call it Texas. Yeah, he's from Texas. Why am I gonna go buy from somebody that's not in my community? No brainer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But what am I saving? Dollar, exactly. dollar ten. What, that, am I, what the fuck? So why the fuck are you fucking paying ninety dollars for a Psycho Bunny Polo oh. when? You can pay whatever when you can, when, when sixty we're or whatever. Polos, it is. When we're selling polos for thirty dollars, right? And a hundred percent of those proceeds Boom, right are there. going yeah, to. But it's like nah, it's not Psycho Bunny, or nah, it's not uh, uh in the fitness community that yeah. like wolf bullshit. Yeah, that, or, or Gym or Shark or yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck. <clears throat> like, why why aren't you buying from the local gym that's putting out some gear right. that's helping him keep his business running? Why? Because it's from Miami? Mm -hmm. Or because it's some guy that you went to high school with and you didn't like the fact that your girlfriend liked him at the time? I don't understand. Like, it's just all this psychological shit where it's like, dog, homegrown is where you should be sticking to, dog. Stick to your homegrown people and l let the let that flourish. Right. But, man, that ego gets in the way, boy. Well, let, let, let's, let's do our part to not give people that opportunity. For one... I know that there's a lot of people watching this right now, listening to it. They're going to want to support. They're going to get on. I know they're going to love <clears throat> this podcast because it is uh, a lot of passion. It's, it's, a, it's, it's coming from a good heart, and it's coming from people who have, ha have had their own walks in life mm. but have all chosen for the right reasons to be part of something bigger, if we can use that term. How can people help support whatever it is that Bearded Villains has going on? Website, what, what can we do? First and foremost, BV. 305.com <coughs> is our website bv305.com you can donate there bearded villains miami at 
whatever it is, Instagram. Um, There's only one Beauty Facebook, Villains Miami. Yeah, it's coming. Beauty yeah. Villains Miami. And just come out to our events, man. Nine times out of ten, our events are free. You know, come out, buy a, you know, buy a shirt, buy a beer. Right, right. A hundred percent of our proceeds go towards whatever it is we're doing, whether it's we're feeding families, where we're, whether we're helping kids in the hospital. Nobody gets paid for this. One hundred percent of our proceeds goes right back into what it is we're doing. And and I want to tell this because <clears throat> you never know who's watching. Um, to all the individuals, you know, individually. If you want to help, that's great. We we appreciate that. Uh, obviously, it it it's, uh, it it means the world. But for to the corporations out there, the, the big business owners, or somebody who might be a employee to a yes. big business, reach out to them. Yes. I don't, I don't want to talk shit, but they got deeper pockets. Maybe as an individual, you know. No, and that's why we're it, a five hundred one c three now. There right? you go, exactly. So B B V yes, it stands for Bearded <clears throat> Villains. That's our social club, right? But B V Miami also sounds stands for Beautiful Vision Miami. Oh, I love is, it. Which okay. is the, the you know that's the vision we have, right? And we're a full five hundred one c three. Instead of paying your taxes, come dump your money to us and know that a hundred percent of it is going towards what it is we're doing. And if you, as a corporation, want to go to that event, by all means, come with us. You guys got all kind of dope-ass merch. I love the fucking logo. I guarantee you guys are going to see me rocking one of these, if not a couple, because I want the Miami Villain one. Yeah, the, I got the, you. The, the, I got you. I'm going to send you a little gift. That shit there is fire, we're, fire. We're switching warehouses <clears throat> right now, but as soon as we get situated, it's on the list. I'm going to send you a nice little, little curb. Um, but 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 definitely, you know, it, it's one of those things where we just want to encourage people that it just takes yes. that 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 little bit of effort to help support a movement. A that it's all within. It's all within. A you know, I, I want to I want to say this in the right way. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of flirting with danger. Something that I love about the Jewish community is I the, say that the the reason that they're they they do so well, and I commend them for it. They do so fucking well. It's not just this has, has nothing to do with religion. Yes, you're right. It, it, it's not just the Jewish community. It's communities that do it. Yes. But damn, these Jews, they do it so well. They fucking keep it within and they help themselves. And you, you, bang. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And they build each other up and this and that. And that's not against any other race. They're no, not keeping no, people no, out. No, They're no, just no, 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 helping push their people because. As a Jew, if you open up your own business and you have a higher other ethnicities, there, I helped everybody else by looking for my own. Look, support local, support that, your that's, own. That's what I tell my guys. So, and, and I tell that to them. It's the truth. It's not just the Jewish community. Um, one of my biggest mentors is Muslim. Even Muslims do that, right? And you got to understand there's different types of Muslims. But they keep the money inside because mm -hmm. you want the money to stay within your, you know, your people. <clears throat> what do I tell my guys? If we got a barber in our group, unless your barber's your best friend or it's somebody you've been going to twenty years, like right, right, it, you should That's be getting your haircut with our barber. Exactly, right. right. If there's a tattoo artist, which we got him, you know, most of my tattoos were done by by members in, in our club. My hair. My, Whatever hair I, I have. It's a beautiful beard. It's a beautiful beard. So uh, my beard trim and my and my and my hair uh, and my and my head polish is done by the same guy in our club. And that's the way it should be, man. You know, we got a mechanic in our club. Yeah. Every time I need my shit exactly. done, yeah, I, him up. I got an AC guy. But that's the way it works. Look, man, there's this thing called BNI, man. It's it's a networking group. That, uh, that's in every single city, Pinecrest, Coral Gables, and they have one of everything. One lawyer, one doctor, one lawn guy, one roof guy, one general contractor, and the job is that every month they meet, you gotta trade leads, and that's how you stay in the group. That's dope. And that's the way it should it's be, man. Goes fuck. Yeah, of course. That's the way it should be. If you know somebody, and you grew up with that person, the first thing I do is I go to Instagram, hey man, I'm doing a, I needed a fire hydrant the other day. Like, yo, if anybody, you know, can get me a fire hydrant, I'm not asking for it for free, let me know. You know, oh, uh, if there's a guy that that wa uh, washes cars. And if it's one of the people I grew up with, I'm going to give them the job. Nine times, you know, the, probably six times out of ten, I'm probably going to get burned because they suck. But there's that chance of giving somebody that you know <coughs> the opportunity to put food on their table, bro. Right. Why are you going to give it to somebody else? Exactly. You know, why are you going to repost Carol G before you repost one of your boys' businesses? Carol G already has, and I'm sorry to keep using Carol G, but it's just something that kept yeah. popping up on my shit today. But it's just, 
you're reposting all of these people that have millions and millions and millions of dollars that don't need your fucking repost, but your homeboy that you don't even know might not even be making ends meet. Right. Just reposted his new business, and you can't do that for him? Yeah. But instead, you're going to DM him and ask him for a fucking handout on his new business? He don't owe you that. You know how much he busted his <clears throat> ass to open up this fucking business? You should be telling him, hey, man, I want to be your first client. How much is it? Right. And just fucking pay the fee, dog. Exactly. That's it. Why are you, you're not going to haggle a motherfucker you don't know. Why are you going to haggle the motherfucker you know? Mm-hmm. Why are you going to try to, you know what I'm saying? Now, unless they reach out and be like, hey, man, Wes, just open up a business, bro. First burger's on me, man. That's different. That was on their initiative. Right, right, right. So exactly. You didn't ask for them. Why it. are you trying to get free food yeah. out of my fucking restaurant? I just opened, man. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you should be bringing all your homeboys to my shit. Like, hey, dog, we're here, and we're going to buy a bunch of fucking burgers. Dog. Right, right. But it's like people don't think like that, dog, and I don't get it, bro. <clears throat> I, I don't. I definitely think that the Miami part ha- plays a big role. Oh, huge. It's just hard to huge. to break down the, the car- compartmentalize why. But there's a lot of little fucking compartments as to why. Psychologically, it's just it's, it's, it's that you're holding on to animosity. You're holding on to something you thought about years ago. Somebody told you something about this person, and you're, you're on their shit. And it's like, look, somebody might tell me, man, I don't, using you as an example, I don't like that nigga Wes. All right, cool, you don't like Wes. But I'm going to meet Wes, and I'm going to see what I think about Exactly. Wes. And that's it. It's my opinion that matters, not what you're telling me about West that matters. And that's the way it should work in all walks of life. There's plenty of people that don't like somebody, bro. Their opinion on them shouldn't fuck Affect up your yours. shit. Unless it's some fucked up shit where, you know, you touched a kid or some crazy fucking wild shit, you know, lit somebody's house on fire. No, bro. Well, but he did some fuck shit. We all do fuck shit, bro. To somebody. There's somebody out there that's going to be like, yo, Danny's this. And they're probably right about it at that moment <clears> in <their throat> life, dog. I'm not an angel, bro. I'm not perfect. But make your own judgment. Exactly. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Well, Danny, on that note, brother, what else, aside from visiting the site, we got uh, BV villains. We got bearded villain. Everything you just type in bearded villain, you're gonna you're gonna come up to the organization. Yeah, you're gonna come bearded, up to the brotherhood. Bearded, villains, bearded villains, Miami, absolutely. And then, <clears throat> do we have any events coming up specifically that we might want to you know tease everybody about? Well, at the, at the moment right now, we we're working on our schedule for what what's coming up next. Um, we just had our biggest event of the year that just passed by that you were at. Right. Um, so, we're working on a couple of things. We'll let you guys know. Just make sure to follow us, Bearded Villains Miami on IG, Bearded Villains Miami on Facebook. BV305 um, is the website, and we'll be posting our next event. We're working on something. I just don't want to put it out there until it's 100% sure. You know what I mean? Right. Well, again, guys, everybody listening, watching, even if it's, you're not the actual person who would uh, donate, invest, or reach out, reach out to somebody who will, man. We, we, we want to help support locally as best as possible. Make sure you show your support. Do what you can for the bearded villains as well as, hey, don't forget about visiting the shop. Black Sheep Apparel Shop dot com. Uh, got a lot of gear over there. Uh, I'm thrilled to have met you, my brother. I'm 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 honored to have met you. You know, I love. I know we 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 were bringing up age brackets and how you feel about certain things in life as you move forward. I'm in a. I, I can only speak for myself. Everything I've been through in life. I just want to surround myself by just real ass, transparent ass positive vibe ass motherfuckers and if if, i don't care if you're a a, a rock and roll head a religious head or whatever head if we can bring positive vibes and meet on a mutual platform that's all i want to fuck with yes sir um if you're chasing empowerment making yourself better as much as possible and so on and so forth i'm all about that and and i and i that's what gravitated me towards the group the brotherhood Certain people, Gabby, Gabby, can't wait to have you on, my brother. We already brought you up plenty of times. Shout out to you. Absolutely. People like Nisa, people like Caesar, mm-hmm. and a lot of your other brothers that I met. You know, at the, the group, the, the 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 event that you just mentioned, I, I love the vibe, man. I love um, 
Appreciate the intentions and, and, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to play my role as a friend, play my role as, as a podcaster, um, everything that I can do to, to help support that. Uh, again, shout out to Dissum. I'm all about Miami. I'm all about local. I'm all about good-hearted, good-minded people. How can I support? What can I do? It's not a, it's not a, th- it's not a, a middle finger to celebrities and all that. But like you said, they're doing plenty, plenty, plenty. Yeah, they fucking got, they good got, they all got on their, their platform own. already. <clears throat> we got a lot to do on our own, and that's what we need to do. So I, I really, 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 totally appreciate you, my brother. Absolutely. And um, huge shout out to the whole brotherhood, bearded villains throughout the whole world. Huge shout out to those in Miami for for raising that bar and starting something different that that has you know ignited something that seems to be a ripple effect in the brotherhood. Yes. And um and it just it sets a standard for other people who might want to do such a thing of, of starting a brotherhood. Not a biker gang. It's not a gang. It's just people with the same intention and all the intentions are good, bro. So um, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you go show your support to D to the bearded villains and to yourself to Black Sheep. Um, And we're going to catch you guys on the flip side, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Peace.